Hey, Max. Oh, that's right. He's at the Euros. And as I'm recording this, the finals are actually going on. If you saw that picture of Max, he looks like a ghost. So maybe he's right here. But we will never see him because he's pale as a ghost. But you know what? I think Max is going to be on next week. We're going to recap the Euros. But this podcast, we're talking all about the RC program and all the races that happened this past weekend. And I got a special guest joining me this weekend uh, who's been a good friend of mine for many, many years to help me talk about the RC program. So with that, I say, you know, let's stop all the jibber-jabbering and let's drop that intro. Nitro is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this grabbing races. Hard not to be it. arrogant when you're always right. You know? See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say, but it's definitely worth a listen. And our pick, can you stop whatever you're doing? Join your host, Letty the Great, with co-hosts and guests as they get together <laughs> to chat our scene. Hey, after that race that I watched this morning, I have to talk about it. Hundred bucks right here, hundred dollar throw. Oh no! <laughs> I like this. Yes, 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 indeed. is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number two five three of the No Name RC podcast. That's right. 253 of the No Name RC Podcast. I'm your host, Kino White, a.k.a. Left the Great. And joining me later, but a little bit later on to talk about the RC program is my good friend for many, many years, Patrick Rossiter Jr., a.k.a. Shakes, a.k.a. Squirrel, a.k.a. Uh, ADHOLS. Uh, but he's going to join me because he was with us at the RC program, which was a great event that I attended this past weekend. But before we get into all of that, I have to say some thank yous some uh, shout outs and we have some RC news to talk about. So with that said, I would like to say thank you to all of the patrons of the NNRC. I'm trying to give you guys a uh, early release of this podcast, but I'm waiting for JQ to help me out with the Patreon because he originally set it up and I have to get a verification code from him because I couldn't sign in the other day. And of course he's at the Euros, So I have to wait till he gets back home in Finlandia. But uh, yeah, thank you to all the patrons of the NNRC. Uh, if you wish to support this podcast just a little bit further financially, you can by going to the uh, Patreon page, which is in the written description of this podcast. The link is there. And uh, uh, yeah, you know, pledging a little bit of dollars, you get early release, uh, early, um, early release, Patreon only podcast. Also this week, I was busy posting a lot of the results and updates from the Euros going on in there until I lost contact with it. But uh, also, if you don't wish to do that, you don't wish to do Patreon, we do have a YouTube membership that you can help out as with as well. And you will get uh, the similar things, but maybe not all the posts and stuff like that, because it's kind of hard to post pictures on YouTube. But you will get early release of podcasts. Uh, with that said, I would also like to say thank you to all of the NNRC squad around the world. Obviously, without this, we cannot do this. Uh, I want to say thank you. The YouTube channel is steadily growing. We're on the road to 5,000 subs. If you haven't already hit that sub notification button uh, on this YouTube channel, please go ahead. We would love to get to 5,000 subs by the end of this year. Uh, hopefully, it can happen. Also, shout out to everybody that's listening to this on the audio side of things. Those numbers still are great. Uh, people still, I understand it that people still prefer to uh, basically listen to podcasts. I'm one of those people as, as well. But uh, we have a pretty cool video dropping uh, later on this week with the Wicked Weekend walkabout that I've done. And I'm going to get back to doing that type of uh, coverage and content when I get to races as well. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to do it this past race because I got there kind of late. And yeah, I probably could have. Uh, but sometimes when you get caught up uh, commentating and stuff like that, that takes over. And at, at the end of the day, that's what I'm there to do is, is do commentary. So 
but look forward uh rc pro rc the georgia peach state all that stuff i'm going to be doing some uh some content for the nnrc i missed the walkabouts i want to get back to doing them and i know people really like them as well so shout out to all of the nnrc squad around the world we cannot do this without you it's good to see you guys enjoying our social media uh don't forget to go hit that like follow button on our facebook page our instagram and our tiktok all steadily growing and we greatly appreciate that also obviously we cannot do this without sponsors we want to thank these companies for all their support. We are coming up near the last quarter of the year. We are in the last quarter of the year, pretty much. And uh, if you are a company that likes what we're doing next year uh, and you want to come on board next year, hit us up. Uh, we'll have our tiers and rates up for you guys shortly. But with that said, I would like to say thank you to InvisibleSpeed.net, who's running a special. Remember, if you buy the course before October 1st right now, you will get pre-ordered for the new book that JQ is releasing, which will be out later on this year. Hopefully later on this year. I know JQ, it'll probably be done later on this year, but it probably won't be released till January, February. But our new updated book, if you order the course, you'll get that for free. So if you do that before October 1st, uh, you will get that uh, offer ends October 1st. And shout out, they also sponsored the recent, uh, the Euro coverage that we've had this weekend excellent job at rc racing tv i'll be working with them her shortly in vegas shout out to high tech rc love high tech uh they actually came on board for the h2 gp as well i'll be hanging out with a lot of those guys at the convention coming up here next weekend actually uh next week no not next week but the following week i leave on the following sunday so thank you to high tech rc i think i'm gonna get myself one of their new rdx two uh two one thousand charges which i'm super excited to get to go along with my rdx2 pro that i have right here that's a new service because i'm been, been busy wrenching so i got some i got some builds going on thank you to some Padal usa was using my battery in my new techno mt4 tan build sidewinder fuel we need to call fred this week and have a chat with him uh sidewinder fuel has been a gracious sponsor of the podcast hot race tires congratulations to nico uh i know i rec- we are recording this after the euros are going on so uh juan carlos can ask one that and he was on hot race tires and so congratulations to him and i believe uh, Boots might have been on them either. Even though it's supposed to run T-Pro, we know it's on, on Hot Race. So congratulations, Nico. I know you're super pumped about that. Mayako, uh, good weekend for Mayako. Not the weekend that they wanted, but we'll talk about that uh, in Euros uh, recap. Beach RC, thank you to Brent uh, Dansford for putting on the RC program. Uh, we'll, obviously, this podcast is all about that. Techno RC for all their continued support. Really enjoyed building my Techno MT410 and driving it. Man, that, I'm going to talk about that. That thing is awesome. Clinic RC, shout out to Tony Newland and every and and Vicky out with her in uh uh how do you live in uh Nevada now? He's showing me that it's all flooding and stuff like that. So I hope everything's all right. Ignite Design RC started building my Ignite Design RC conversion. Thank you to Jimmy Woodley for getting that to me. Uh, I have to order a few parts for it that I did, uh, so I had to put that on hold. But man, it's a awesome piece of kit at engineering that they have created thank you to gene Stroud jr for helping me out with the uh build as well as west marvel for answering my questions i felt like a newbie asking those guys questions stacked rc what's up jeff Stacksy? you're running x right now x right now racecraft usa they just uh, announced chase was announcing a summer september shredder series so he's encouraging everybody to race and uh send in your results and send in how many not not results per se but how many races you attended uh, if you want to learn more about that, go check it out on our Facebook and Instagram page. You can win some a mini module and something else, some other swag from Racecraft USA. Thank you. Long time sponsor. I need to go get me one of those Waffle House hats. I really like them. Uh, let, uh, Chase, I'm going to order one from you. Let's see if I can get it delivered to me in America when I'm there to save it, having to ship her and possibly getting damaged. Shout out to the Florida RC Championships. Uh, I'll be going. I think I'm going to the next race at Epic. Looking forward to that. WRCE, my boy Danny Paz, man, that guy is amazing at what he does. I enjoy working with him. We drove 14 hours Monday. Well, Lance drove eight, Danny drove six, and I was falling asleep. I fell asleep next. Danny, luckily, he got enough sleep in the drive from North Carolina to uh, Lake City, and then I fell asleep from Lake City to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, also, shout out to SJ Racing. Man. I got I to gotta shout out to my boy Gene Shout Jr., uh, awesome dude. He's been hanging out with us. He works with us at these races. He's doing, he's got a, he does custom builds and everything out there. Great mechanic. Uh, I want to send him some business. So if you have a kit to build or you want a pit kit rebuilt or anything like that, hit up SJ Racing, uh, Gene Trout Jr. on Facebook and send that guy some business, man. He's a great dude, loves RC. And, uh, I want to see him, I want to see his business flourish. 
Shout out to House of RC, RCGP, our drivers, David Ronafog, Jared Tebow, Robert Badier, uh, Alexander Hagbert. Also, shout out to Lugs Racing Tires for being a long time supporter of the podcast. You can see their hat back there as well. So thank you to them. But uh, we have a somewhat new sponsor, but not really a new sponsor. Actually, we have two. I would say, I also have to say shout out to Brent Jackson and RC Body Armor. Building my uh, MT410, I used a lot of your firm for my battery, underneath my battery. Uh, I used it in one of my boat builds as well to secure the battery. Uh, I used it under the motor. And I think that's a good idea what you're doing. Um, some good products there. I haven't used a dragon skin yet. I'm going to put that in my uh, my micro builds when I build that. So when that happens. And, uh, but our new sponsor, but not new, uh, me and this gentleman have become friends over the last couple of years, and we definitely started talking a lot more. I finally got to meet him at PNB, but that's Donathan RC for all your cable needs. What's up, Zach? Uh, we talk quite often, and so we figured out something where I would promote him, and I could, you know, just use, now that I'm doing more builds and doing more stuff, I can use some of his products. So check them out at Donathan RC. They offer the best charge cabling leads in the business. I have leads for all your, your needs. You can custom personalize. I just, I have some, but I ordered some more uh, to, personally, to personalize with the NNRC logos and all that stuff. So I'm looking forward to getting some more of them. And uh, if you guys do check it out, we actually do have a coupon code for that. You can go to the drcproshop.com. And if you use the promo code nitrous to glory isn't that ironic when he's a new nitro to glory for electric stuff uh you can save 10 percent on your order thank you zach and uh, i appreciate man I, I, he's just become a good friend of mine and i'm trying to help my friends and he's trying to help me and i appreciate his support so thank you to all the sponsors please guys if you can uh there is written in the written description of this podcast there are links affiliate links coupon codes some of them don't have that if you can, please just let them know that you heard about this on the No Name RC podcast. I greatly, greatly appreciate that. It helps me out a lot, and <clears throat> it, it helps the podcast out. All right, so a couple of shout-outs. Uh, first off, I want to say, hey, thank you, everybody, uh, for coming up, showing us some love at the RC program. A lot of people were really happy with what uh, Danny, myself, and Lance, and everybody done at Wicked Weekend, and that shows a lot of support for you guys for us and keeps us motivated so thank you for all of that and um all the support this race was a little bit more laid back i got to hang out a little bit more and talk to some old friends i know i don't get to do that too much at races nowadays because i'm always in the booth but uh yeah it was good it was good to be able to sit off and just talk to some friends and enjoy a little downtime and thank you to everybody that came up and showed us support we will strive to be better than ever each event we try to get better just as i try to be better on this podcast each event so with that said, thank you to everybody that came up and showed us some love at the RC program. Happy birthday to my boy, Javon Mallory. Thank you, dude. I have not been able to get the uh, the ammo crate back home yet. I have to leave it at Danny's. I'm going to hopefully pick it up at my next my next trip. Stephen Bess. Uh, it's turned out to be me and Stephen Bess have become really good friends. Uh, I really enjoy my podcast with him. I need to get him back on her. I love his opinions. Uh, I need to get him back on. If you want to check his podcast, I'll check it out. He used to be one of the involved in all the RC magazines back in the day. Uh, McCoy Starkey up there in the Pacific Northwest. Met him at the Nationals. He was racing this weekend at HRCR. My boy, Will MacGyver, MacGyver. And of course, uh, the elder Stike Lather, who I've gotten to know over the years, Stike Lathers, who had a great weekend this weekend, who actually won the RC program. Mr. Gene Stike Lather, happy birthday to you, sir. I wish you many more. It's always good to see you at the tracks. Uh, coming up this weekend is my boy Gary Stutes Race, the TZO Spec Tire Team Cash Shovel. Coming up this weekend at Gary's RC Racing, we had Gary on a lefty off the record uh, a few weeks ago, and you could check everything out there about that. It's a team race. He's got some cool prizes, <clears throat> and uh, he's got some cool hay bales with the NNRC logo on it and all that stuff. So go if you're in the area, uh, if you want to learn more about that, I believe you can go to Gary's RC Racing on Facebook and check out more information about that. And uh, thank you, Gary, for all the support and uh, all that stuff. So in some somber news, we have to talk about first, uh, Scotty, Muse, and another gentleman were driving home from Scotty's race this past weekend at Robin Hood in the UK. They were in a vicious car accident, man. I saw that car and that car looked really bad. Uh, I swore somebody had to be hurt really bad or passed away. But uh, Scotty was involved in that. He was not driving. Muse was driving. They were involved in an accident on the highway coming home from Robin Hood in the UK. And um, 
Guys, people are all right, but Scotty, like I think he bruised his sternum, and he ha- he was supposed to go do ETS or EOS this past this weekend in Germany, I believe, but was not able. So get well, Scotty Ernst, and get well, Muse, and everybody involved. And thank goodness that was not a worse accident um, as well. Also, in some really sad news, I would like to say condolences to uh, the Hearts family and the UK RC family. Carl Jackson, I did not know this gentleman but I heard his name before. And then actually uh, Elliot Boots was running a tribute body to him at the Euros, which actually worked because uh, Boots had a great, great Euros and finished second. Great result for him. But basically he had half the body painted in Boots's uh, theme and then the other half painted in Carl Jackson's theme. So you see Boots one minute when his car was going up and you could see the passenger side, You saw, I believe passenger side, servo side. Uh, you saw Boots's theme and then on the exhaust side, you saw the lime green color of uh, Carl Jackson, but uh, lots of good uh, thoughts and 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 comments about Carl. I believe he was a Hearts uh, Hearts um, Hearts RC Racing is a is a famous track in the U in the UK, not too far outside of of London, and I believe he was a big supporter of that race, that track. So our condolences go to his family. He was a young man apparently and passed away suddenly his family, as well as the Hearts racing community there and all the UK racing community there over in the UK. Also, another sad news is, uh, just heard about this a couple of days ago, was uh, Herm Proenza, Proenza, who I got to meet at the Florida RC Championships earlier this year in April. He passed away as well uh, this week. This week, all of a sudden in his sleep, uh, very sad to see that. And uh, my condolences and our condolences go to his family and all of the Florida RC racing community. And also, uh, I wanted to say uh, positive vibes to all of our racing community in the North Florida area and that area who uh, just recently went through Hurricane Idalia. We was worried about that on our way home from North Carolina. I know Lance was very worried about it. Luckily, he was not hit hard. But up there in that Tallahassee area, up there in that Panhandle area, people got hit pretty hard. So uh, our thoughts go out to our RC family up there. And I hope you guys didn't get hit too hard and you can recover from that. So some happy news, some not so happy news, but we all, uh, you know, our RC family is important to us and we, we want to show some love to as many as possible. So with that said, it's enough jibber jabbering about shout outs and sponsors and all that type of stuff. Uh, also, sorry, uh, I believe there's a go fund for Herm Parenza. who have links for that in the written description of this podcast as well so don't forget to check that out and uh, check out and save some money with our sponsors with that said we're going to go on to the invisible speed and high-tech rc news obviously this commercial does not apply but there is a special going on for invisible speed and i'll tell you about that once again after this commercial break Thank you to InvisibleSpeed.net for their support. We actually have new commercials. I just haven't got them from Matt yet. I'll have them soon. Uh, He made some nice commercials for the European coverage. I'll get them hopefully from him. But right now, Invisible Speed has a special going on right now where you can sign up for the course. And when you sign up for that course, you will be entered for the pre-order to get a free copy of the new uh, Invisible Speed book that JQ is actually uh, writing at the moment. It should be available by the end of the year. So you, the offer goes on to October 1st. We do have coupon codes. Uh, we do have an affiliate link, sorry, in the link in the written description that you can click. And that also helps us out as well. So sign up for the, uh, if you want to make your speed visible and get better at RC, sign up for the Invisible Speed online course. And as well, uh, you will be entered for the new book that's coming out, which will have English versions. I know we don't have any English versions. I have four. I have four. So I might bring them in the next trip and see if I can sell them to somebody. So check it out and uh, get the new 
get online and learn about RC, but also get the new Invisible Speed book version 2.0 that's coming out later on this year. Also, a big thank you to High Tech RC for their continued support. They have been a big supporter of this podcast, and they have released early on this year, as well as celebrating their 50th anniversary of uh, being in business, they have released the RDX2 1000 ACDC dual port charger and discharger with power supply it has a sleek modern design easy to easy to transport handle the rdx2 1000 is the acdc powerhouse you need to charge your high capacity batteries packs at rapid rates the dual output ports each offer up to 20 amps of power to simultaneously charge two batteries of any chemistry or you can pair the outputs together and charge up to rates of 35 amps the RDX2 1000 features an easy-to-use LCD interface display and handy push-button controls, while the front panel XT60 connectors with XH balance ports help keep wiring uncluttered. I will combine this with my Donathan RC cabling. It's a high charge and it's high charge and discharge rates for lowering resi- resistance and improving power make it perfect for the stock pink pinion stock racers as well. Accepting both 12 volt DC and 100 to 240 volts AC, the RDX2 1000 is ideal for charging at home or in the field and perfect for all your hobbyist needs. Internal circuitry allows discharge rates up to 2 amps and 40 amps when paired with the companion AD350 discharge model that is sold separately. So go to high tech RC slash where to buy to find out where you can buy this awesome new charger. Or if you're going to buy it from a hobby shop, just let them know hey, Lefty sent you. So thank you, High Tech, for all the continued support. I look forward to hanging out with everybody there shortly. Coming up here in a few, not even a few weeks, in a couple of weeks. So yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. All righty then. So up in RC News, we talked about this last week. And now we see that it is now available for pre-order is the Raw Speed 8-scale buggy tire automatic tire gluing machine so you can get the complete kit with printed parts electronics and hardware and instructions for 499 dollars. max and i were thinking this was going to be like a thousand dollars so it's actually cheaper than what we thought or you can get the basic kit which is 199 which comes with printed parts bdm instructions no electronics so i would definitely be going for the uh for the um complete kit you know what raw speed my buddy had a great suggestion you should send this send one to me so i could do an unboxing and review of it, I would need to get some tires to glue up. You can actually, yeah. So I'll get some tires and glue them up. Uh, pre-orders are open now. They end the 30th of September. And this is a limited production run and uh, pre-order only. So it's not going to be around for too long. It has two configurations, one for eight-scale buggy, one for eight-scale truggy. The eight-scale buggy co- configuration works incredibly well after calibration and is what the machine was mainly designed for. The Truggy configuration is a bit more sensitive, and different brands of tires have very, have very different fits, so you may have to spend some time finding the correct configuration that works depending on your choice of Truggy tire. Insert a wheel. There may be cases where the machine will not gl- glue certain Truggy, truggy combinations. Uh, all purchase options come with parts for both configurations. Also, as they make changes and revisions to the machine, we will show the STL files and software for the people that have purchased machines. The custom machines can be upgraded over time. I actually think this is a really good idea. I think this is going to benefit a lot of people, and I think people are really going to enjoy this. So check it out. Uh, Raw Speed, if you was interested in this, it is now up for uh, pre-order on their site. All righty then, moving on in the RC News world. Let's go. Uh, so let's go to a Raw Action. Uh, Roar uh, has put out their announcement that people have until, uh, let's see here. Um, actually, Roar has been really busy, and it's a reason why they have been busy. So here's a reminder that all track bids are still open for nationals, but they will be closing soon. September 15th will be the last day to submit bids so the executive community can select next year's national track. So if you are interested in hosting a Roar nationals next year, Get in your bids. Get in your bids as soon as possible. Also, big news, big news, big news. This is actually really good news. I was super happy to hear about this. I know both of these gentlemen really well. I've been trying to get both of them to join Raw for quite some time. 
Uh, I remember when Brent was telling me he was thinking about doing it. I was like, do it. And of course, Lance McDonald used to be involved with Raw and has held a Raw Nationals and many regionals. And I, myself and Danny Paz have been on him about joining it for some time. And I know Clayton really wanted to join him, wanted him to join. But it's awesome to see Brent Dansford and Lance McDonald both volunteering for positions in Raw. So this is the announcement from Raw. It is with enormous pride. I'm pleased to announce we have finally filled Raw's executive community committee these two new two members come with tons of experience and will bring huge expertise to the committee first we have brent densford volunteering for the competition director as competition director he will be responsible for presenting tracks for national races to the committee as well as contracts with with tracks for nationals and world bids so it's probably brent you got to talk to about uh putting on the race if you want to be one and bidding on for on the race so that's great i really like to hear that i would love to see b trust have a world as well. So also next we have Lance McDonald volunteering for promotions director. As promotions promotions director, he will be responsible for promoting the sport around the country as well as coming up with new inventive ways to promote nationals. Uh, so I am super pumped about this. Both of these guys are both heavily involved, involved in RC. They know their stuff. Uh, obviously, Lance and I have been talking for quite some time about this, and I, I know he has some great ideas, and I'm sure Brent has awesome ideas as well, just like his RC program race this past weekend. So I really look forward to seeing what they bring to the uh, to the whole thing of Raw, and I think it's a great addition to have two off-road guys in Raw. So well done, Raw. I know you got a lot of uh, uh, bashing, but it's also good to see good things like this happening, and I wish uh, Brent and Lance all the luck in this and i can't wait to see what they they do and bring to the table when this is when this is all said and done so i am pumped about this i think people are pumped about this and i look forward to all of this uh coming together and i look forward to seeing raw being great again and being a factor in rc so especially in america so i look forward to all of this and super super happy about this super pumped about this super super pumped all right in other news, uh, obviously, the next big giant race coming up is for the first time in 10 years, we are having a world championship, offer a 10 scale world championship at Hobby Action RC. I see they are busy getting the track ready and whatnot. So that's awesome to see. But uh, what was great was seeing uh, Maud, Matt Olson, who I have to give this guy so much credit. This guy works hard. He is, he did his, he did, he is just. A really hardworking dude. He's doing coverage. I know how hard doing coverage is and all that type of stuff. And he's like another one man team, but he's going to have a bunch of people helping him out this because he's doing all the coverage for uh, the upcoming If My World Championships coming up. Uh, I think it starts on the 8th to the, yeah, the 8th of September and goes for a week. But uh, he's hired a live broadcast announcing team. We've got Richard Lake, Zach Rogers coming out of retirement. I don't know Richard Lake. I don't know Wayne Ashmore, but I'm sure they're pretty good because he would not have them on there if they weren't. And um, I really, really do appreciate having putting that effort into get commentating. Announcing teams make a big difference. He's also brought on a photographer, Jason Bolanger, uh, who's one of his friends. And he's apparently a really, really good photographer. And uh, Giovanni Cordanis, who's not really known in the industry, but has been doing some catchy edits. And he's going to be, I guess he's going to be their videographer, like the producer, like their editor. And uh, also Cameron Cullen, who is a uh, little known to the most of the racing world, but uh, he has done amazing work with his YouTube post-race edits, showing a story like unlike I have ever seen. I have to actually go check out this guy's, uh, this guy's, I think I have seen his YouTube. It would be great if they were to put his YouTube in there. Uh, Cam comes from the CBS me, CBS Sports team, going to be an awesome event. So it's really good to see this team being put together. Uh, I'm sure he's going to have his camera guy as well. I look forward. I'm going to try and watch as much as the worlds as I can. I will be at my event, which will I will be at two events myself. Uh, obviously, I'm going out to the H2 GP, which is happening in Las Vegas. I'll be so close to the worlds, but so far. A lot of people have reached out and asked me if I'm going to the routes, and I'm not, unfortunately. So um, I was, I, I wanted to, but I, this event came up, and then I'm off to the, obviously to the Georgia Peach, Georgia Peach State Classic, which is coming up after that. 
as you can see down there as well. So I look forward. Good luck, Matt. Good luck, everybody at the Worlds. I think it's going to be epic. I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait to see as much as I can about it. I will be trying to watch it, like I said. And I think these guys are going to do a great job. Uh, I know how much work it is to do coverage. So good job. Good job, Matt. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. And yeah, just just awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Alrighty then. So a couple of races going on this weekend. We have the J Concepts NTC NCTS Round 3 Northwest Turf Nationals going on up RC Bandis. I was listening to Gadi and Rona talk about that on the RIP podcast. This is a AstroTurf race outdoor. Up. Looks awesome. Obviously, we have the IFMAR 10 scale world championships coming up. We have the Georgia Peach State Classic coming up, which I'll be to in the weekend of the 15th to the 19th. I want to say that's the date of 16th to 19th or 18th, one of those. Uh, as well, obviously, I'm going to the H2GP coming up, uh, not this weekend, but the following week. Uh, I fly out Sunday for that. It's going to be awesome. Different event. Uh, I'll, I'm going to do some content from there so you guys can see. Uh, after that, we have the IFMAR 1-8 scale e-buggy World Cup coming up from the 22nd to the 24th in Pista de Macayanas in Guarda, Portugal. Portugal, this is the first ever event for 1-8 scale e-buggy. So this is the World Cup. In 25, 25, 2025, will be the official worlds. Ryan Lutz is going to that. Your Newman, I believe. Canas is going. A couple top European guys are going because what's going on is also Angaro's got his race on the same weekend, and a lot of people are going to that. So uh, that's going on. Then we have Buggy Land coming up the following week, which I would love to go to. RC Racing TV, let's get me to Buggy Land. Come on, guys. You know you want me over there. I want to go so badly. Uh, JQ was actually like, you should come buggy land. I was like, yeah, we need to find the money to do that, to go buggy land. Uh, then we have Jake Kensop's INS round four coming up September 9th. We have the IFMAR eight scale GT worlds in October. Obviously, uh, we also have uh, the, in October, we have, I will be going, I think, to the Florida RC Car- RC championships race. Then we have Masters of Dirt coming up. I'll be, I'll be there. Then in, uh, so in November, it's going to be busy. We have AMS. Florida Carpet Championships. Um, no, yeah, AMS, Florida Carpet Championships, FRCC race. Then, of course, uh, Fulbro, which will now be held at the Lake and at Lake Wakama, where he was this past weekend for RC Pro-Am. All righty then. So let's see. Uh, what other news do I have going on here? Nothing much, uh, but let's get into the Sidewinder Racing Past Weekend segment of this podcast. If I miss some news, let me know. I do apologize. Uh, I am looking for somebody to help me out with that. So if you're interested in joining the NNRC team, hit me up. We're looking for people who are eager eager to follow RC News and all that type of stuff and help with making notes every month, because, every week, because it's getting a little bit hard for me to do all on my own. I miss a lot of stuff now. You know, so much going on. So with we are up to the Sidewinder Fuel uh, RC Racing Recaps. So this is about race recaps that happened this past weekend. Uh, it is brought to you by Sidewinder Fuel. Morgan Fuel has been collaborating with many of the world's top drivers for over 40 years. This has enabled them to test their fuels in many of the most challenging situations and take the development and competition of the fuels to the next level. The result is Sidewinder, the market's most powerful racing fuel. The fuel is track-tested and proven by national champions and world champions, including such drivers as Ryan Cavalier, Ryan Mayfield, Greg Degani, Mark Vitas, and many more. Their current top driver is Little Bump, who had an impressive victory this past weekend. These drivers appreciate that Sidewinder has blended perfectly for high performance needs of competition, competitive racing. Don't let victory slip through your fingers. Purchase Sidewinder today. You can Ask, you can, I think you can p- purchase directly or purchase from your hobby shops if they have them. If you want to get side one in your hobby shop, let them know. All righty then. So first up, I think, obviously, we talk about this, but there was a lot of racing going on this past weekend. We had JBRL at the dirt. We had the Black Classic. Shout out to my boys up there at Beggar Racing. My buddy, Kevin LaChapelle, who's good to see him back racing, was telling me about it. This is actually a really big race in Canada. I used to get a few top pros go into it and stuff like that so it's good to see it coming back it's on like a um, oil track linseed oil track or something like that uh we had the cheyenne showdown which is in wyoming which is uh i saw like cody thompson went there and this used to be an event like where nick watlett cody thompson and a couple a couple other guys used to go to every year they didn't go this year and of course 
We had the RC Pro Realm, which this podcast is all about. And then we had the Wildy events, my boy Justin Wildy, with his work series race at HRCR, which actually was the biggest race this weekend, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more. We saw Little Bump uh, win Nitro Buggy against guys like Jared Tebow, Jared Wiggins, uh, and Walker Spinrad. So it, it was it was some competition there. And he beat Tebow pretty much straight up, it looked like. Uh, but with that say, let's look at the expert Nitro Buggy results at uh, JBR had a dirt. So we had Steve Harris winning, followed by Frankie Contreras Jr., Carlos Arnando, and Kirkman, Sean Kirkman fourth, and Jermaine Robinson fifth. Ivan Moreno Jr., another fast racer coming up uh, here. He is uh, came six. He beat Ryan Pavitas, Mark Vitas, and Dean Saxon, who actually made that song that we heard on one of the other podcasts here uh, earlier. So it, let's look at the entry count for this race. Let's see if they have it here. It was, you know, JBR gets pretty packed. 133 drivers, 261 entries. They had, um, they have various, let's see, they have a few. So they have 40 plus e buggy, 40 plus nitro buggy, expert nitro buggy, intermediate nitro buggy, open electric buggy, open electric buggy, open nitro buggy, rookie, sports and electric buggy. That's a, that's a lot of classes in one day. So let's see who won intermediate nitro buggy. Jimmy Fishback, he won that. Nick Hernandez race. Check that out. He raced. Uh, Wally came six, Don Wilkerminer, Jeff G. Manny Charsman race two. Check that out. All right. Good stuff. Uh, let's see about, uh, did it, let's see Sportsman Nitro Buggy. Ricky Armagost, Curtis Lindahl, Travis Ollins, Chase Anthill, Josh Alessi. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well done to all the guys who attended JBRL at the dirt. Good stuff to see. Bego Raceway. So this is a little less known uh, drivers as well. But Damian LeMay, who is a pretty fast guy, he won that. Oliver Raposo, Brian Ross, Jordan Miles, Loic DeShannis, his the son of Eric DeShannis, the owner of the track. And a little bit of a, a lesser turnout for the guys up there at Bego. But uh, they had a good, looks like they had a good weekend. Always great to see this race coming back. The Quebec Classic. I've heard so many good things about this race. They had a fairly decent turnout. 104 drivers, 270 70, uh, entries. They had, they had quite a bit of class. They had 10 scale, so they had 10 scale four wheel drive, mini truggy, uh, eight scale e buggy, electric e buggy, uh, e truggy, sorry, e bruggy, eight scale nitro buggy, eight scale nitro truggy, 35 plus eight scale electro buggy, and 35 plus nitro buggy. So well done to those guys. Let's see how many entries mini truggy. They had nine entries in mini truggy. Let's see how much 10 scale four wheel drive had. They had eight. So let's see what eight scale electric had. They had the biggest eight scale e buggy, paying the bills, 55 entries. Let's see what e truggy was because this is great. Brought to you by Serpent, too. 36 entries for e truggy. Well done. Well done. Well done. Let's see what Nitro Truggy had. Nitro Truggy had 29. So e truck, e truggy, e buggy paying the bills in Quebec Classic at the Quebec Classic. All right, let's go to the rest of my notes here. What other races did we have? Um, hold on for a second, gentlemen. Ever, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Um I had these races right here. Here we go. Cheyenne Showdown. Um, so let's have a look here. This race was pretty decent. I, I'm not too... I, I remember seeing this track a few times. I'm not too familiar where it is. But uh, eight scale Nitro Buggy. We had Just Vigil, Grandpa. I wonder if he's old. Ryan Reese, Cody Thompson, Robert Naldi. This race had 16 entries in the Pro Nitro Buggy Main. Let's see what they had entry-wise. They had 100, 115 drivers, 203 entries. Uh, let's see what they had in... Sorry, I was looking at... Um, when I was calling out those results earlier, they were qualifying results, a lot of them. So I did make a mistake there. I do apologize for that. Uh, they had Expert E-Buggy, e truggy. Expert Nitro Truggy, Pro Nitro Buggy, Sportsman E Buggy, Sportsman Nitro Buggy, Sportsman, Sportsman E Truggy, and Sportsman Nitro Truggy. Let's have a look at Sportsman Nitro Truggy. We saw Jimmy Lemming, Rick Morris, Lawrence Quintal, Pat O'Neill, Jason Oaks, Sportsman E Buggy, Gene Gallagos, Tyler Tratch, Welby Nails, Cody Dietz, uh, family, William Feeney, Nitro Truggy, Ryan Reese, Taco Bell, Cody Thompson, Colin Clark. And expert e truggy. Let's see. E truggy had Cole Dietrich, Justin Hoglin. What's up, dude? Hope you're enjoying. Uh, hope you're enjoying Ahsoka. So nice. Another good race for guys up there in the Wyoming area. So good job to them as well. 
Uh, I do apologize. I was calling out qualifying results from the previous races, but I do believe Daniel, Daniel, Damien LeMay won that. Uh, I do get confused sometimes. You know me. I'm a bumbling idiot at most times, at best. So let's talk about the really big event that happened this past weekend. Uh, let me see if I can share this as well, because this, this facility is amazing. Uh, I must, I, so I've, I've met the eaters, uh, a few, I think it was last year at, at the silver state. Yes, I was at, and I think I'm no, actually I met him at DNC then at the silver state. So this race is part of my boy, Justin Wildy. Now Justin Wildy, I've worked with at RCGP. We did all four rounds last year. And this year, he was talking to me about getting up there, but we just couldn't make it happen. And I've wanted to get up to HRCR. It's up there in Idaho, I want to say, about 40 minutes from Spokane. But uh, he had Little Bump up there, Jared Tebow, Jared Wiggins, Walker Spinrad, Taylor Peterson, another fast guy. Then we had some um, PN, PNW fast guys like Jeremy Leake, Austin Azor, Macaulay Starkey, Brian Eater, obviously Dylan Bartlett was up there. Barry Baker went up there. The fabulous one even went up there last minute. So that's good to see. I talked to him. He said that facility was nice. The track was good. It was built by uh, Joey. Obviously, it was had very, on the straightaway, we had the rhythm section that Joey, that timing section that Joey is famous for and whatnot. I'm actually going to put this upper on the, on the screen so you can see it. So let's get that upper so you can at least see what the, the track looked like. And uh, there we go. Let me uh, get this banner out of her for you guys. Anyway, here you go. Here's this track. Joey built it. This facility is great. Mark Santoria was there as well. I watched his uh, track when he got there, and then the facility walkabout. What a beautiful facility that the Eiders have put up there. It is. This is a pretty big off-road track. The driver's hand is amazing. They have a full one eight scale asphalt on-road track. They have a carpet track inside with plenty of pitting space, so people are pitting as well in this in this event um <clears throat> excuse me so this event was the biggest event that they had this weekend they had uh let's see right here well done for justin too i'm happy for justin and brian i know they've been trying to uh brian's put a lot of money a lot of time into this track and facility and wants to get there i know he wants to do a nationals i hope he does get that bid as well but they had 159 drivers, 384 entries. So this was packed. This is also a cap race, so it's sold out. Uh, but let's have a little look at the uh, lap or two around this race because it's 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 pretty good. So uh, Jared Tebow TQ'd, so he started on pole. And, man, he was flying too, but little bump, man. Just let's have a look at this track. This track is really nice. It's it's big. Uh, Ronald Falk actually messaged me when he saw this track, and he goes, Lefty, now this is one of the best tracks I've seen in a long time. I would love to go race at this track. And um, they did have moving cameras and stuff as well. So that was good to see. Man, that's a big triple. That triple sends you pretty big uphill. Tebow, man, Tebow was leading, but him and Little Bump had a battle the entire time. Walker Spinrad was there as well. So it was good to see. Congratulations to Little Bump, man. That's a big victory for him. Yes, granted, this didn't have all the top pros in there. But man, Little Bump was just on fire. First race, first race back after his his trip over to Vietnam, visiting home. So it's always good to see Little Bump there doing well. And man, just look at that trip out there. This track is really nice. I do like this track, man. The facility is great. Go check out uh, Mark Santa Maria's track walk and facility walk and all that good stuff. It's really good. It's a nice facility. And uh, I want to say congratulations to the Eiders, man. I know. Uh, they they are actually in Mexico now racing the uh, Ensenada Snore Nationals. Man, those guys travel a lot. They race everything too. Fifth scale, 10th scale, on road, 8th scale. They're just RC geeking right out. They are at every race they can go. Race time events, they are there. So shout out to HRCR. This, this facility is beautiful. I know they wanted to have a big event like this. And I see more big events like this in their future. And I hope to get up to this facility one day too. But there you see Tebow. I think that's Little Bump. Yeah, that's Little Bump right behind him. They're having a good little battle, man. These They battled the entire time. Little Bump had a little bobble there. But what a beautiful track. Great layout, too. Great layout. Man, they had uh, three Pubcats building this layout, too. So good stuff. If you want to check out more of this, this is actually live RC's coverage. But I believe they have it on Facebook as well, the whole stream and whatnot. So good job to, good job to 
Justin Wildy, great dude. He deserves stuff like this. And obviously the Eiders have put so much time and effort into this track. So it's well done for them as well. And congratulations to Little Bump. He won. He won. Uh, let's go to the results here, actually. So Little Bump won Nitro Buggy. Jared Wiggins won E Buggy. Tebow second. Ashton Bristol third. Uh, Little Bump fourth. And Keith Hadley fifth. E Truggy. Let's see how many entries E Truggy had. E Truggy was 48 entries. E Truggy. I'm loving E Truggy. Ashton Bristol, Evan Roth, Brendan Bartlett. They have a, also have a spec tire nitro buggy race, which is pretty cool. Taylor Peterson, Carson Fix, Jared Cosarera, Cosaria, Kurt Kellum, Orion Prince, Austin Azure. I haven't spoken to Austin in quite some time. My buddy from up the Pacific Northwest. Nitro buggy saw a little bump. Jared Tebow, Jared Wiggins, Walker Spinrat, Taylor Peterson, Jeremy Litke, Austin Azure in seventh. Uh, let's look at, let's look at the junior class. So little bump won that. AJ Rodriguez, Devin King, Liam Roth, Evan Roth. Always good to have a junior class. Maddie Fields. And Nitro Truggy, Jeremy Litke, Carson Phillips, Brendan Bartlett, Shane Prokoshet, and Drake Howell. And Sportsman e Buggy, Brandon Deach, Brandon Gomier, Dylan Hirano, Zach Misak, and Michael Swab. So, oh, they have a spec tire e Buggy race too. That's cool. Man, the work service is pretty cool. Justin's doing a great job up there. Congratulations to everybody. Beautiful facility. Uh, I have a feeling that these guys are going to get a match just because he wants it so bad and has put so much time and effort into this. And I hope he does. And uh, I and it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good, guys. All right. So well done. Awesome looking track. Awesome facility. And well done to the Eiders. I know they're super pumped about that. Have fun in Mexico this weekend. And um, all that good stuff. So with that said, I think that's enough RC news and jibber jabbering for me. We are going to go on to the Techno RC main part of this podcast, which is Patrick Russell and I talking about the RC program race that we attended this past weekend. Great event. Really enjoyed it. Love the draft. Well done, Brent. That's what right. Well done, everybody involved. With that said, thank you, Techno RC, for your continued support. And uh, we appreciate it. Uh, all the support from Techno RC. Go over to Techno RC, check them out, get yourself a Techno. Techno RC. Techno RC is a championship winning manufacturer of high performance A scale, TED scale, nitro, and electric RC buggies and trucks. With a worldwide dealer network, USA and Europe based headquarters, comprehensive warranty program, and global race support, Techno RC is excellence in RC. View the full lineup of Techno RC race proven vehicles by visiting www.technorc.com. All right. Thank you, Techno, for the continued support. And joining me today in the virtual studio is a, a gentleman that I've known for quite some time. We actually raced against each other many, many, many years ago. Uh, you guys often hear about me talking and bragging about racing against Kyle Bush back in 2004. Well, this guy, you won that race, I believe. I did. All my wheels stayed on. Yes, that's right. That's when we had those, uh, that's when the, I think the muscle truck was just coming out there using 12 millimeters and it was very common to break the in, the wheel. It would, it would strip out the center of the wheel and that's when Proline made their money with the 23 millimeter heads conversion. That's what I had on my truck. But, but then people started snapping wheel pins so they had to quickly take body clips, cut them, put them in the axle and go. You see, so this guy is like a plethora of RC knowledge. He's been racing for a long time. Uh, you've probably heard of him on race time events or and what, throughout the Southeast, you know who he is. But this is Patrick Rossiter Jr., a.k.a. Hi. P. Diddy, a.k.a. Squirrel, a.k.a. a few other Squeaky. names. Squeaky, a.k.a. Pull around Shake. the second window, please, ma'am. Shakes. Oh, I, I get it all. Oh, yeah. But uh, we traveled together to the RC program this past weekend. Well, you guys went up there. I met you up there. But uh, a little bit about you. You are you have been racing for many, many years. You and your father have been racing. Uh, like I said, I first met you at that race. And I think we kind of pitted together at the 2005 RC Pro at in Charlotte at um, Lance's at new – Yeah, at, his, at the farm too. Uh -huh. Then we guys went to – well, we was kind of next to each other when we went over to the RC Pro Finals later on that year. Was you running Panther as well? Um, I, I, I can't remember if I was sponsored by them, but I was running their stuff. Yes. Did you go to the banquet that year? Oh God. If I do, I don't remember. Okay. I know that 
I think 2005, I was, I was 16 and, uh, yeah, I, I, I was very sheltered. So probably not. Okay. Cause your probably dad not. was there and I remember all that we all went, I was at the higher since we went to the, to the banquet. It was, that was pretty badass. It was like a hundred people there, but, yeah. um, also, man, this is my buddy, Patrick Rossiter. He's an avid racer in the Southeast, uh, runs, f- helps out a lot at Phil Hurd Raceway down there in Savannah, Georgia. Um, tell us a little bit about Phil Hurd because it's a very old track. It's been around for quite some time. Yeah, it's, um, its very first race was held in June of 1987. Oh, wow. Um, it started out as a dirt oval, and then it gradually made its way to the off-road, and now it's an even bigger off-road. It was founded by... Uh, Curl- Colonel Philip Sherman Hurd, a.k.a. Phil Hurd, who ended up going on to host the uh, 1991, 1992, and 1995 Roar Nationals. And up until his death in 1999, he was actually Roar president for several years. Oh, I did not know that. Mm-hmm. I did yep. not know that. All right, so this track has a very rich history. Uh, you've been involved in it for quite some time. Your father's been involved in it. Um, Even my I- mother. Oh really? Day. Yeah, she okay. she she did radio impound in the back of the rider trucks. I bet you there's people out there listening to this that won't even know what a radio impound is. Not a clue. Yeah, I I, I say this joke all the time with Jared Tebow. It's like, who's on seventy eight? <laughs> He'll understand what I'm talking about. Right. So for those of you who are just tuning in, if you've heard about this ancient dinosaur thing called a radio impound before, we had two point four gigahertz. You actually had to uh, have sets of crystals extra sets of crystals you couldn't you couldn't have your radio in the pits it had to be That's impounded yeah that was so much such a pain in the ass it's so it much was. easier now it was oh and here here's the better part so where we were located um you know when we would have our club races at the time back in the early to mid 90s the rc boat club was on the back side of the island so uh-huh. we would have channel problems all the time because the boat guys would not coordinate with us but in the end, we ended up having the lad laugh because uh, last laugh um, because they were kicked off the island because during one of the races, one of the boats decapitated a duck. So Peter got involved, and then they were kicked off the island. So. No way! It really decapitated a duck. It did, and the worst thing was it survived. So the race director actually had to stop the race, go out there, and um, shoot it in front of all the kids. So of course, Peter raised all kind of uh, cane, and they were uh, asked to leave. That's, yeah, that's, that's, it, I mean, it's a, it's, not, it's a funny story, but it's not a funny story. Poor. No, not. no. I mean, every, everybody else said, oh, my God, that's horrible. It's like, no, go get the grill ready. What are you talking about? <laughs> we'll recycle this guy. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the kids are going to have dinner. Why are they crying? Come on. All right. <laughs> so, Phil Hard, you actually go in there tomorrow. As, as we're recording this, we just finished watching the, um, well, I just finished watching the one eight scale European Championships over Redavon. Congratulations to uh, Juan Carlos Canas, your S Wax driver, and also I know you're happy about that. Yes. And um, he he had a masterful drive there in Redavon. I kind of picked him to win that as well last week on the well, last podcast that we had. And um, yeah, good job. I'm gonna do a whole full recap on that with Max and probably JQ next week. But we're here to talk about the RC program that both of us attended this past weekend. Uh, it was kind of a surprise for me because I wasn't planning on going this too late. And then Lance was like, hey, let's go. Let's get you up here, which I greatly appreciate him doing that. And because it was him, Danny Paz is obviously doing the, the coverage. You drove up with Lance as well as Gene Trout. Yes. And I was supposed to drive up too. But uh, Tropical Storm Franklin had a different opinion about that and i was supposed to leave on a wednesday but uh my flight got canceled last minute because of and then what else happened because there was something else that happened that you didn't tell people either what happened at your airport that morning oh yes i forgot all about that so yeah. uh basically so i just, so tropical storm franklin came and dropped about zero bit of rain on us up in the north coast i know in some other places in the country there was some flooding and whatnot but we didn't really get hit. I didn't really see the reason for all the, the airports to be closed, but they were closed. So I was actually not going to go. And then Lance is like, look, fly into the closest airport as you can. Because this is the thing. We fly, I fly into Fort Lauderdale, drive with Danny up to Lance's. Then we drive up to wherever the race is going to be. Obviously, he was going to pick up Gene and then pick up you and then go up to Lake Wakama in North Carolina. So I, yeah. Oh, as, as I was calling Lake Waka Waka and all this type of stuff, people had no idea yeah, where like, this was. Yeah. 
Um, now, 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 not to be confused with my painter Eric Everett, he lives in Wikiwachi, Florida. Wikiwachi, so yes, Wiki-wachi, that's all. Yeah, there's a lot like of it. Native American names around here. A lot yes, of, I mean, yes. You would you would think with all the rednecks it'd be something different, but, but no, <laughs> no. No, Florida's Native Americans are here first now. Okichibi, Okichibi, Okichibi. Yes, that's it. I always boot. Yeah. I always brutalize that name. Yeah. Bless you. It's, it's so simple. So I ended up flying out of uh, Puerto Plata to Miami to Charlotte on the Thursday. And actually, I remember messaging you guys. My wife's like, do you know that they had a bomb scare at the airport that you're flying out of? And I was just like, what? So <laughs> someone called in and, and put in a bomb scare there. And a few of the flights were late. My flight was actually late. Too, so I'm actually glad I didn't book the uh, flight that would have got me to Charlotte a lot earlier. I actually didn't get to Charlotte to about 12 at night. And uh, I ended up spending the night. While you guys are already up there, you guys are sending me pictures. Oh, we got everything set up and I'm just chilling. kind of. Well, not chilling, yeah. but I'm traveling. And well, then you're I anxious to, to get with us. Yes, because, you know, part of, part of the fun is actually the road trip up, right? On the road trip back, it's fun, but you're tired and you just want to get home. But on the road trip up, you're anxious, you're talking, you're having fun and whatnot. Speaking but of I, road trip, how about that banana pudding, huh? It was good. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> but I will say this. I'm, I'm, I definitely will stop in that Bucky's, and that will be a staple of my, my, yes. my, my repertoire when I stop at Bucky's, which is yes. actually a really great gas station, by the way. It is. It, it's, it's like if, if Pilot and Walmart had a baby. <laughs> it's actually really good. It's, it it's is, really nice. It really and um, but I must admit the 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 black the black pudding the black pudding that's a that's a that's an English thing, that's oh, actually okay. sheep stomach, and uh, no, it's actually like blood sausage. That's what it is. It's it's nasty. It's like petrified blood. I just ate just just so you know. no. It's actually a thing called black pudding. Um, I bet it is. I bet that's what it looks like afterwards too. It's nasty. I don't know how people can eat that. It's like cooked blood. Or something well, like that. It, well, even the Scottish, I mean, they have haggis. So like, yes. Oh, what, what's, it's an appetizer for them. I mean, I could probably handle some haggis. It's a sheep stomach with a whole bunch of stuff stuffed in it. I mean, I have Scottish blood, but I'm, oh, <laughs> I don't know about that now. All right. We're good. definitely going to. But the best banana pudding that I had, well, I'm spoiled. Yeah, we went definitely went squirrel right off the bat. The, yeah. the, uh, now, how do we go from airplanes to sheep stomach? I mean, this I, is, I, it's coming around, coming around. I'm coming around. I'm coming around. Don't right, worry. Come in, come in to turn three. I'll show you how this all connects. So, um, basically what Blake had at the, at Wicked Weekend for my birthday. Now that was some homemade banana pudding. That was, that was absolutely amazing. That, that that was some little hole in the wall barbecue restaurant. It was really good. And it was good. But that, that banana pudding was amazing. So speaking of Blake, he offered to, um, you know, he has a private little prop plane. I believe you've been on it as well. Have you mm-hmm. been on it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we got to uh, AMS last year. Okay, so because we yeah because we had a storm roll in, we were supposed to host the Georgia State Championship that weekend, and uh, the hurricane said, uh, "Nah, y'all are staying home." I said, "They know we are." So we got in Blake's plane and we went to AMS that year. That was actually <laughs> right. my first race with uh, S Works. Okay, it. sweet. So mm-hmm. for some for some time, oh, you got some staticky noise there. For some yeah, time, sorry about that. oh, like it's like your mic just popped or something. Okay, it's that definitely Ooh. that. Okay, okay. we're good. Okay. Um, so Blake had offered many times to dro- to fly me up to a race or whatever instead of driving. So he had messaged me because I needed a lift from Charlotte to Lake Wakama. He's like, "Look, I'll fly up to Char- I'll fly up to fly up to uh to Charlotte, and then uh, I'll take you to Lock- Lake Wakama." And I was like oh, hesitant at first because Lance said he can get me. Then he was like, "Lance said, man, if you could get somebody, do it." And so we did it, and it was actually a great. It was fun. So you can't pick me up like that. Private plane life is a whole lot different. We flew oh, up to more. Different. How many times? By, by the way, how many times did he say zero to whiskey? Dude, so I, <laughs> this is the whole thing. Like, yeah. he did very little flying and more writing on stuff and on the radio. Oh, so yeah. this was the oh, yeah. amazing got, thing you, about you it. Definitely, you definitely got to stay in touch. I mean, especially post nine eleven, you've really got to know what you're doing, where you're going, all this stuff because paranoia is real. Yeah, but I mean, just that, like, just knowing where other planes are, restricted areas, all the stuff. So it was quite fun mm-hmm. to see that side of things. I want to thank, thank Blake for that. We went up to Moorhead City to pick up an RC boat. And then we came down to Lake Waccamaw. We actually passed over the track. I was like, that's the track right there. And we was trying to find the track. And we, we was like, we saw it. We found it. 
And um, yeah, so if it wasn't for Blake, I would have never have gotten there in time. I had a good time flying around in a prop plane. I got to see a good bit of North Carolina, like lots of trees, lots of forests. We went on the coast. Um, mm. So it's beautiful. Like, you know, I like, I, I really do like North Carolina. It's a huge state too. I didn't realize it how is. huge it is. It's a lot bigger than people think. It is. That's it's actually very said. long. <laughs> it's actually a very long state. I didn't realize how long it was, like rect- like almost rectangular shape, but different. Just the edge though. So we we was going to the Nitro Pro RC program, which uh, was being put on by Beach RC Brent Densford. This was his brainchild. Uh, it was a little bit of a different event, and he, also he found this. It's it's a uh, boys and girls club, like campsite. Hor- no, it's a horse stadium. It's it has an equestrian horses. center. Right. So it has a que- it has horses and stuff like that. Rodeos. We find that this is a second life for these ev- these equestrian centers is having RC races in them. Now. Yes. Yeah. So we went I there. Dave, ha- Dave Lycom is the one that started that trend. Definitely. I believe. Yes. Yes, he did. So we have race time events. So Definitely. Uh, we're seeing a couple of these. We I, I see them up in the Pacific Northwest. I've seen some up in Colorado as well. Um, and now we're seeing a few more pop up in the Southeast. And with all the rain and everything that happens, I mean, it's only kind of uh, logical to do this because of the weather in the Southeast and whatnot. You know, it could, it could be sunny and hot or it can be pouring on rain. Absolutely. I, I just went by Phil Hurd on the way here because or on the way home because I had to, you know, check and make sure we're still racing because, you know, we just had a hurricane come through, which, you know, my parking lot had one tree uh, limb down and I was about to take a picture of it and say we will rebuild um, because we, we hardly got anything here. Now, okay. as far as the Gulf Coast of Florida, I'm praying for them because I know they got, yeah, hit, they got hit hard. They got hit yeah, hard. And then the uh, the southwest part of Georgia got uh, got a little rocked. Um, but otherwise I was going past there and I saw, um, my buddy Roger Cowart prepping the track, um, getting it all together and squirrel. I just forgot what I was talking about. Um, oh, being ready to race. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So just, you know, getting that all prepped out and, um, and yeah. Oh yeah. Going back to the weather. Um, especially in the Southeast, I, I told him, I said, dude, if we ever have a drought, all we have to do is just try and plan a race because it'll pour like hell. I, right, it's it, it, it's it's almost like the colonel is saying, "Y'all need to find a roof because this ain't working no more." Or have it on the roof and it doesn't rain at all until the last until you're ready to pack up and go home. It's happened oh, yeah. to us. Uh, yeah. We'll get into that. And yeah. if you guys heard, he, keep hearing us say squirrel. It's to him, yeah, because that is uh, inside joke. They're, with they're, us. they're you know that that's what I've taught these guys. There's ADD, there's ADHD, and then there's what I have, which is ADOLS. Which stands for attention deficit. Oh, look, shiny! <laughs> this is I, I will, joking. I will veer, I will veer way off in the left field, right joke, field. And, yeah. Yes, when we heard the "oh look, shiny" part, I think the whole truck the laugh for a whole yeah. twenty minutes. If I didn't get car sick, I would have been leaning out the window the entire time, going line, 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 <laughs> line. <laughs> so I got to keep Patrick on track here. But uh, so we went up to RC. This place is a nice little facility. Um, it's covered, obviously the sides are filled in with that black type of mesh stuff. So you do get some air through it. It's not as big as some of the facilities I've been to. It's long. I would say it's about the size of AMS and, um, maybe not. Probably. It definitely has a low ceiling. That's for sure. Yes. It and it has sprinklers though. It has sprinklers on it or misters as well. So that makes things a little bit easier to wet it, wet the track, but it's a nice little facility. And, uh, what Brent done was he bought, uh, the, driver stand and pit, pit lane, lane and staging. from and staging from uh what used to be the blue ridge nationals which was uh scale racing sports uh which belonged to josh garbett so he bought that stuff the talents uh were all in charge of putting that together so it's a massive driver stand, massive pit lane and then he got that i believe he can keep it up there on site as well because i know he's going to have future events there which mm-hmm. is great we'll talk about that as well so we went up there. We, none of us had been there before, so we had never really seen it. Obviously, Brent had been up there. And uh, when I got up there, I was pleasant surprise. It had hookups for trailers, black, uh, white, you know, like water, electricity, black water tanks. Uh, I had a sufficient room for camping and whatnot up there as well. Uh, I did not get around the town too much. I think we only went out to eat once that whole time. We was there. We went to the Mexican restaurant, which was nearby, which was absolutely excellent food. It was beautiful. I loved it. I, I was upset we didn't eat there on Sunday, even though Lance cooked some good food. But that was, was good. Upset. He brought Waffle House to us. Uh, great Waffle House on the Sunday night. Uh, but it was an excellent uh, 
uh, some food cooked. And I think as I came through town, there's some other seafood, like a seafood place and some other Mexican places. So there's a little town nearby. So it's not too far off the beaten path. I believe Lake Wakama is mostly, uh, the lake is like a tourist a- attraction and the tobacco is big business there so from what I was told. It's like a big so, campground of some kind. Yeah. yeah Where so, a lot of snowbirds come from up north. Yes, but I was told so, that Lake Mac- Wakama is full of alligators. Uh, well, Camden Lime didn't find it, find any because he went swimming in it. I know. I told him that. It's like, oh, I was only there for 20 minutes. I said, 20, 20 yeah, minutes and too the long for me. alligators were there in 21 minutes. <laughs> um, so it's a nice facility, beautiful facility. And this is the first race there. The dirt. So it was a lot of ifs. You know, whenever you're doing something like this, you don't know how it's going to be, how the dirt's going to be, how the facility is going to react. And I think it did pretty good facility-wise. Uh, I know we had some electricity tripping out on our side for for, for quick sections, but that kind of was fixed. Uh, and then a lot of people had bought their generators and stuff like that. But I thought it was very comfortable. Uh, they had big enough. They had air conditioned women's bathrooms and not air conditioned men's bathrooms. We gotta we gotta talk about not that. Not the best for our ladies. Yes. Our so ladies all, all ladies who are traveling, you get AC in your bathrooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would say that the dirt was a little bit sandier than usual. Yeah. I well, the say, problem the problem with that is I, I will I will say this that Brent actually brought in mm-hmm. six more additional loads of dirt. The problem was that what he asked for and what was delivered, two and a half of those loads was nothing but topsoil. Ah, so when so Brian was sandy. So when Brian Burnett built the track, he had to use that topsoil as the base of the jumps. So mm. he wasn't you know left with much, and he said he could only go about ten inches in the ground for the dirt mm. that was there. And of course, okay. what most people know with horse arenas, you can't add calcium or lime or any of that because it's harmful to the animals. Right. So you've right. got to run it as natural as possible. And um, I think it would have held together a little bit better had Brian got an earlier start. The problem was they had a rodeo the previous weekend. So instead of starting building the track on a Sunday, Brian didn't actually get started till Tuesday morning. So the track yeah. didn't have time to cure. And really I agree with that. I agree with that. And yeah. this is my second Brian Burnett track. Uh, Lucas was also there helping out as well. So I think it was yes. a mixture. And yes. I'm, I'm starting to, each track builder has their style of track. So I'm starting to see his style of track come out as well. Yeah. And it was very fast. I thought they built a proper, a great track for what they didn't know was going to happen to the, to the dirt. Um, right. And also I talked to Lucas as well about it. We was talking about it afterwards and he came up with some, some good ideas. Uh, like you said, letting the track set, letting that water soak in and all that type of stuff, having it built a couple of days prior to that. And then I said, maybe even just watering the fluff at some point and leaving the line dry so it dries out and you do got a groove. But I will say this, it was like old school RC racing. We had a, sh- whoo, a plethora of loam. Like there was loamy mountains. It was like... It was gnarly. That's the best. You- I mean, pe- people say that tracks get character. This thing was bipolar, as far as I'm concerned. There was there th- this thing. This was schizo. This wasn't yes. even character. This was multiple personalities all over the place. Right. I mean, but when, the fa- I, when the fast guys slow down a good five seconds, mm-hmm. I mean that's a lot on that small track. I well, thought I it was say small compared to others, but it was a smaller track, but it was faster. But I think they made a proper track because it did get very rough. I yeah. I did enjoy that part of it, but I think what was what was cool to see was guys were using the loom. As like berms and ways to get like, if you watch, yeah, you was using it. I watched yeah. Cole Ogden. I watched Cole Ogden come through the the middle section of that triple, and he would go right on the berm. Like it was, well, it was a berm by then. He would go right on the edge of that line, get in the fluff just enough where it scrubbed enough speed. He would get over that double, and then he would keep it so low over that triple. He was doing that all weekend, and it was such a great line. So it, it got rough, but not as rough as. I've seen like Silver State was gets rough too, but the learn was just amazing. Like you could go out if you got out too far in the line, it was like going in powder snow. It was yes. Like, so yeah, because early on when the when the layout was new, I was telling people that the layout had a very tense scale vibe to it in a sense mm-hmm. of one mistake and you're almost a lap down. Mm-hmm. But when it started getting rougher and rougher, it really reminded me of P and B two in Unadilla, where mm. it got gnarly. The only difference was we didn't have wood jumps at the time that you would, you know, run into it and actually bounce back. So, but, but like, I'll tell you that, that it was gnarly. And, and from what I believe Lucas has said is future events, if, and when they hold them there, um, they plan to maintenance it every single night because they see what the dirt's going to do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, even 
the turnout was like right at 170, which for an inaugural event, that's still that's still good. So for future events, they're going to try and maintenance it overnight, every night to uh, to contain it with the larger turnout. Yeah, yeah. So I give credit. I thought the track was good. It worked out, even though it got super rough. Um, I, I thought it made for, when it, when it got rough, it made for a much more exciting racing because we saw people making mistakes and like that. And we will talk about entries and whatnot because this race, I knew this race was not. I think Brent also understood that it was not going to be a high entry race because it's a different concept, right? New facility, different concept and whatnot. Right. And also, we had a a shit ton of races going on this weekend. We had yeah, there were a lot uh, of neighboring tracks that are racing, and not to mention a lot of our. Factory guys are prepping for ten scale worlds in a, in exactly. a week or so. so they they they're all ten scale at this moment. Yeah, and then we had big races. We had the um, we had the H. I think the biggest race was the HRCR race, which our little yeah. one, yeah, up in different. Idaho, which was a beautiful facility. We had JBRL on Saturday. Not that it affects well that too much. Uh, yeah. We had the Bego Quebec Classic. There was. Classic. Also, we also then had previous prior to that, we had the Mugen Challenge. So there's been a lot of racing going on. And I think just uh, talking to Brent uh, about the date, he said he definitely will be changing the date uh, to an earlier time for next year for this race. And then, of course, was the concept of the program stuff, right? The program concept. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm a visual guy. So I had to kind of visualize how all this worked. I mean, you can explain it to me all you want. So the basic basic uh, theory of it was to put the pro guys on a team of uh, one sportsman guy, one intermediate guy. Now, there were a few pro guys there. We had, like, when I say pro guys, like people that do the, scene, do the pro circuit, it was Spencer Hackert, uh, Cole Ogden, Camden Lime was there. And I think that was about it when it comes to those upper echelons of racers. And then it was local, I would say local regional people that, uh, run pros in that classes. You was one of them. Uh, we had Dave Carmendi, Don Elliott, uh, David Olson, Kristen, David Olson, Payhood, um, Brandon Mill, Rand, Rand brothers, Ryan Rand, yeah, both and the Rand Ryan brothers, Rand. Brandon Mill, who, and um, I think that was it. Oh, uh, um, Matt Navoso, Angry Elf, yeah, yeah, yep, cupcake. So yes, cupcake. Yep. Uh, so they, it was a mixture of that. And so this is how it worked. So Friday night after practice, they had the first ever RC program draft. So they, we had, uh, it's a nice little sit off area with uh, picnic benches and stuff. And it has a veranda. So they moved everything over there and they moved the speakers and everybody was sitting off having some frosty beverages. And then how it works is you pro guys were then going to pick your, um, your picks for sportsmen and intermediate. We had so, a random draw. We had to pick right. random draw first of who's going to pick and win. And mm-hmm. then we looked at the heat sheets to see who was running intermediate. And it was only e-buggy and nitro buggies. Yes. That Truggy wasn't involved and 40 plus wasn't involved. Right. And so, what was cool was people were sitting around. I think, I think you guys, once it was kind of explained, Lance, I, I have to give Lance good credit. He, he winged the whole thing and I think he knocked it out of the park and the whole concept came across very uh, easy to everybody, even myself, who's an idiot at times. I was just sitting there watching it. And I just remember sitting off. I think if you guys saw a little reel and on um, people, it, it was uh, just a great uh, way to sit off with people and enjoy RC in a different style. Like we didn't get to more, do no racing. A fellowship. A yes, fellowship. it was. It was definitely that people were sitting off. They were talking. Obviously, some people were eating. We was having some beers and stuff like that. And it's 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 rare that we get to do that at these races because you know we do stay too late and we usually go our own ways and go to our campers and stuff like this. But not on this Friday night. Everybody that was there kind of sat around and they wanted to see who was going to get drafted. So the random draw was done by picking cards out of a. You had to pick a blind card and pick out of it. Unfortunately, we only had eight teams on the e-buggy side, and then we had 16 teams on the nitro buggy side. And what you had to do was you had to pick a sportsman driver and you had to pick a, an mm-hmm. intermediate driver. Now, for your, for your, for your e-buggy team, you, you, it didn't have to be the same. You can, have, you can pick three, two different people for your e-buggy team and two different people for your nitro buggy team. And obviously, uh, and also, if you, if, you came, if you picked first, you picked last in, in the next round, I believe. Right. 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 And, it, and the next for the intermediate. And also how he did it was that the sportsman sportsman points were actually the highest point value. And yeah. then it was intermediate that was second, and the pro points were the lowest. 
So you kind of have to be really knowledgeable about who you're going to pick. And it was fun because I, this is when I saw the pro guys get into it because I saw them before, before they're like, Oh, you know, like, yeah, that, you know, it's just something that we're going to do. But when they got into it and I think they started picking it and all that stuff, that's when you saw that saw guys going through lap times, going through heat sheets and picking out. Uh, well, different also people. when they, when they found out too, that money was involved, they're like, Oh, oh yes, man, it was a I got bills to pay. Yes, it was. It was a um, thousand for first place. 500 for second and 250 for third. And that was for nitro teams and the electric team. So if you oh. won both nitro and electric, you walk away with two grand. Okay. So that was good. That, yeah. Once you hear money is involved in it, you take it a little bit more serious. And yeah. then we saw people like actually getting into it and making their picks. Yeah. And like Heckard, was- Heckard actually took a picture of the heat sheet on Snapchat and started making circles and X's and all this. Stuff. I mean, he had, he was like John Madden, like making X's and circles, and and that's what that's all about. Oh, really? See, oh, I yeah, missed all yeah. that. He was in, oh, he was into it, dude. Big time. I, I just kind of, like I said, I just kind of went over to the side and was just watching it all and embracing the... Uh, I really did embrace the sitting off of everybody, watching everybody, waiting to get picked type mm-hmm. of thing, and I thought that was really just... It's been a while since I've been involved in something like that, right? Yeah, so, some 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 people were worried about you know it being like dodgeball. I don't want to be get pit last and all that stuff. So, but yeah, yeah, so, so there's the winners. You got Ogden, Katie Carmody, and I believe that's Davy Talent. That is Davy Talent, looking like Wilson from Home Improvement with that hat. Yeah, Harry. yeah. Where's the fence? Yeah, um, <laughs> I know. And then you got Olson. Olson got third. Um, I just added this guy on Facebook in the yellow shirt. His name is Chris. I yes. think it's Chris. I'm, and that's Jeremy Talent. I can't, I can't remember Jeremy his name Talent. either. And then yeah, we have he, he Charlie like Yates. He's from D- D- <laughs> Dynasty. He does. And then we yeah. have Charlie Yates, Ken Rand, and Mad Maddie Long, who had a great weekend as well. So yeah. this was this was uh, the checks that they gave out. I thought that was pretty cool. I think this was for Electric Class, because Stike Lather actually won. Um, the, yes. Here we go. Team Stike yeah. Lather. I think Joe won this for them because Joe had a, a good weekend. He got two TQs. Oh, that's he the did. other thing. So you did get points for qualifying as well. You got points for each TQ and then uh, overall qualifying as well. So and again, the sportsmen were worth the most. Yes. Sportsmen guys were worth the most. So after people made their picks and all this type of stuff, I remember you actually stayed up. You and uh, Gene stayed up to like 3 o'clock in the morning working on Michael Hines' car. Yes, I did. And let me let me tell you something. I love my buddy Michael Hine to death, but if this man was sponsored by Simple Green, he still wouldn't use it. <laughs> uh, I, um, I have gotten on his behind about that so much, and I was just going to look over his e-buggy. I was just going to check screws, make sure everything was loose. It's 2.30, and I've already gone through all three diffs. I'm like, do you want to do the shocks? No, I'm done. Set his right height, let it go. Because I'm I'm checking the center the center drive shafts. Of course, they normally get loose, so I take the rear diff out and um, I open up the rear bulkhead and it's soaking wet. What? And the rear diff is empty. So I'm like, well, if I'm going to rebuild this, I might as well rebuild all three. And before I know it, it's two thirty, and now I'm trying to get the delay out of his speedo. Um, it's ESC, not his clothing. Um, <laughs> so I had to go in his radio, reset the model, do the throw. And finally, I got the settings right. I'm like, okay, it's fast now. Can we go to bed, please? And yeah, so needless to say, my Q1 was not the best. I needed a nap. And I, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, so that was the whole point of this, right? To, you have to work as a a team to win this money. So we saw the pro guys uh, and intermediate all trying to help each other out. They were pitting for each other. They that was really cool. Cars. Seeing the factory right. guys actually pitting for the sportsman intermediate guys, that was actually really, really cool. I mean, that yeah. that that's how involved you get. That's that's how a lot of these factory boys need to be, you know, involved. It's it, you know, it's one thing to give advice, but you know, when you're going out of your way to help somebody else, I mean, you don't know how much that means to these up and coming racers. I mean, that means a lot. Yes. And I understand that, you know, you have to focus on your program as well. But if you got the time and you see somebody up and coming that has potential and really wants to get better, don't 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 hesitate to uh, to go out of your way to help somebody. Well, this is really this is a great that. way to do that. And I, I think um, I remember Brent telling me about this. He actually got a little bit of the idea from what we did at RCGP with the uh, pros love the Joes. 
where we actually teamed up the where they teamed up the people who were like in the last bit of the mains or the the, the slower people of the day, and mm-hmm. they teamed them up with uh, different pro guys, and the pro guys went and drove their car, then they wrenched them to help them wrench their car, and then they had to do a pro guy had to do as fast a lap as possible with their car, and then they had a like five minute race for the. It was great. I mean, I like this type of stuff. I know this is impossible at a lot of the bigger races because of the high entry count. But at a race like this, where it's meant to be like that, I thought it was a great concept to see the dra- to see the interest in the draft. That was like people had a good time. I remember. Um, so Dave Carmendi is one of the captains, right? Oh Lord! And I mean, and, oh, and you know Dave Lord. and his wife Cardi. Shout out to Race Like a Girl, the Carmendis. By the way, they are having their. Uh, uh, Future Stars of RC race at Redbrush coming up on the 30th of December, by the way. That's a good Which initiative really cool as well. Because what Katie actually did was she actually had a tub next to staging, mm-hmm. and it was for people to donate all their used tires instead of throwing them away. If you didn't want them anymore, put them in that tub, and she was going to give them to all the newbies at, at, yep. Redbush, at Redbush. Another great initiative set up by uh, local racers in there. Yeah. But and it's way easier not- than them actually diving in the trash can because I've seen that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or if you just want to donate tires, you can donate uh-huh. them as well. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the the funny thing was, I remember Dave did not pick her for either of her team, either of his teams, uh-uh. and Glad's made him pay. And I was talking to him after. She was like, "He told me he wasn't gonna pick me," and she's like, "I'm happy to be on Cole's team anyway." And they were teasing each other, and I was, he was like. I know every nut and bolt of that car. And she goes, Yeah, oh, no. Dave actually said that. He said, I'm in control of every screw and bolt. And I told Katie that later, and she said, That is such bullshit. He doesn't <laughs> touch my car. He's full of crap. She said that Cole said home? okay. He said that Cole said he's gonna take her car and lock it off in his trailer so she doesn't <laughs> so he doesn't do nothing to it. But <laughs> I thought that boy, I thought that was fun. Uh I, was. and uh I remember Lance just making Dave uh, pant about that. And I just thought that the, when, when I was actually able to sit there, visualize the whole thing, see how it happened, see the people excited about it. Uh, I thought it was a great concept and I can't wait to see this happen next year. I'm sure we'll probably get a, a few more top guys here as well, which will make it even better. Imagine like if you get to have like Mayfield as your pit guy and help you out while, you know, oh, or something cool. like Ask that. That's red. Red yeah. gets it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Red gets but, it. Yeah, but that but that's the that's the whole thing. I think that what a lot of events overlook is, you know, they just add pro and sportsmen or pro open and sportsmen just for the entries. But one of the most important classes is sportsmen because that mm-hmm. is supposed to be your up and coming group, the future of the hobby. And you can't ignore those people because they, they are the real driving force of the hobby. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. But it gives those people a chance to, you know, a lot of people are nervous to go up and talk to some of these pro guys at events. And this was a little much, a little bit more laid back, not as as tense as some of these events. So you now this guy has to come to you. Right. And talk oh, to yeah. you and help you out because you mean something. You mean the most points to him as a sportsman guy. You mean the most point, more points than this intermediate. So I think it's a great way to bridge that gap. And I just wanted to say, man. Shout out to Brent Densford and whoever, whoever teamed up with him to do that because I thought it was a great concept. I know when he was telling me about it, I was like, okay, I get it, but I don't get it. But when I actually saw it and how it all worked out, I was like, dude, I think this was awesome. I really enjoyed it. It was really good. It was yes. really good. And now, I think Cole Ogden should seek a sponsorship with Coors Light. That's all I'm saying. Oh, man. Like, oh, that, my God. Dude. That, that mean, camp he, he definitely can likes to – they love the Blue Mountains. The Blue oh, Mountains and Lord. Coronas. So the they go blue. from, yeah. They go from, uh, they go from the Blue Mountains of the of the of um, the cores. What is it? The Blue Mountains of the Rockies to the to be to across the border in Mexico with Coronas, but uh, oh, they they had a good time. They they, they teamed up with their their teams. I saw them helping them out, and I think the whole draft night was just a great concept. It was well done by. I want to sh- Lance was like. Ooh, I had no idea what I was doing, but I think it went pretty good. And I said, like, yeah, I've done good. And I remember Brent was even relieved and he said, oh, that went better than well, I expected. Well, I will say also that somebody brought some delicious moonshine to the party and that made, and that made it all clear. Also, that, that, oh, oh, yes. And we had some vittles afterwards too. So then Brent uh-huh. had food for us. Like yeah, yeah we did food. have some finger food. Yeah, nothing yeah like I definitely, finger, finger I definitely went and got, got myself about... Those little Hawaiian sandwiches. Oh my gosh. Those Hawaiian oh, yeah. ham and Hawaiian, cheese sandwiches. Hawaiian bread. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I must oh. eat about eight of them things. I was oh, hungry. 
I was so hungry. <laughs> so that was gotta... also very, very nice of him to cater some food for everybody. And um, I greatly appreciate it. And I just thought that that was a great concept. And if he was on the fence of how things worked at this race, that's how it worked. It was, it was a, now, uh, I hope that next year it, it can be to maybe Truggy if they get more people there. Obviously, uh, we, it would like, I think 15, it's supposed to be 15 people. I think 15 people is comfortable that holds mm-hmm. on. It's basically supposed to be the amount of people that will be on a, in a main, right? Yeah, I think the pro, the pro entries really dictate mm-hmm. how the rest of it goes. More exactly. Or less. So I hope that, and it doesn't have to, like, I think, I think it was a great mix of, like pros like Cole Ogden, like a Spencer Hackett, and a Camden Lime. And then we had regional pros, you know, like yourself. You actually had a very good weekend as well, race wise. I did. Um, I, once, I, once I took a nap, I was fine. Yes. But I thought it was just. <laughs> well, I thought it was just. Into that, okay? Yeah. But it, yeah, it was, it was an awesome concept. I think if you're on the fence about the whole RC program thing, I hope we explained it. And I think I can't, I know now that after this draft night, Next year's draft night is going to be even more epic. Like, I think, um, I know, you know, it would be cool if they actually knew who the pro guys were. And then each guy had like a, a T-shirt and hat made up. And like, you know how they actually do like a, a NFL football draft? Oh. They come up and then okay. you have like, I choose such and such person. And they take the hat and they take the shirt and they take a picture. And then they'll be like, that would be cool. No, that yeah, would be just, freaking cool. Just be cool. like this all the side, like Camden Lab, pro, I choose intermediate driver. Joe Schmo, yeah, and all that. Actually, I Camden did a, he did it proper. He did in the 2023 RC program draft <laughs> round one. Oh, yeah, was he like, was formal. Oh, yeah. So wow, okay. Sure it was good to see. Good to see. All right, so then uh, Saturday brought along the qualifying. Now, being as there wasn't many entries, uh, we decided to do 10-minute qualifiers, so people got a shit ton of race time, of track time. 10-minute qualifiers, like about two-minute warm-ups, and we did three qualifiers. I mean, that was and a we lot still of done time. a decent hour. Yes, I think we got done at nine, ten, Ish. ten. Yeah. yeah, we were supposed to be done earlier, but we had uh, we had to call for a lot of volunteer time marshals because of lack of entries. Yeah, that's the only problem. So, but I will say this: in the pro class, Cole Ogden was the toast of the time. He was so freaking fast in e buggy and nitro buggy. I was like, dude, this guy's gonna walk away from it on Sunday. And like Camden Line struggled, uh, Spencer Hackett struggled. Oh, Spencer Hackett struggled to Q three. He showed up at Q three because in yes, Q three in in, in E buggy and Nitro buggy, he was just on a different level. He I found like, the wow. tire. He found the yes. tire. S three hole shots. This was definitely mm-hmm. a, a hole shot old school type of track. I I joked to guys. I said I will put old crime fighters on and just stay in the fluff. Yeah, if I had some triple D's, that probably would have been because I I'm personally. I've never found triple D's to work for me, but I but I'm told that the pillow ball cars like triple D's a lot better because mm. they have a lot of four, but not you know not so much side. But that's just me. But I think had I given them a chance and had some, I think triple D's would have been a would have been a good tire for car. Okay, I remember you and Gene were constantly talking about that. But as well, like I said, them them that pro line hole shot man that that was mm-hmm. a trick for cam for. For Spencer. Hackert, and yep. man, he really came around on the on that Q three, and then that that form followed him into the next day where we yep. started. So the next day, uh, everybody. So let's just go over that real quick. Let's see who actually. Hold on, I had results up here for a second. Okay. Let's see who went through results so we give some people some love. But I think it was Hackert, Cole, and then who was Can't, it? Uh, I think in um, an e buggy, it well, I know in e buggy it was, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. it was Spencer Camden Cole, myself, Ryan Rand. Well, Pro. I forgot that. Um, I forgot about Olsen, right? Olsen came out and ran one of Nitro Buggy and, and TQ. Oh yeah, D- David made him work for it. That's for sure. He oh, I was shocked at that. Definitely mm-hmm. shocked at that. Um, he went zero three three, so also was fast, fat, very yeah, fast. Dave, in, in David's, David's been putting in the work. I mean, yes. he really has. He wants to get better. Yes. And um, the 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 one thing I tell David, and I have to remind him all the time, is just be humble and do not forget where you came from. That's all yes. I tell him. 
So actually, Co Ogden was your TQ. He went he went two zero two. Hackert was second. He went three two zero, and also he went zero three three. Camden Live had a five four four. I, I was expecting Camden to set the world on fire right off the bat. He also waited to the main to do that. Um, and then we had Jake Steichler around in that. Oh, you actually came in seventh. That uh, yeah, qualified nine, seventh. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the fourteen and was uh, was that nitro or electric? That was nitro. Yeah, yeah. The fourteen was pull it off and go take a nap. Yeah, right. And then we had uh, Joke Stike. So intermediate was pretty hot too. Nitro intermediate was very very good. We had Stike Leather, who was fast. He had a zero four on a sword. Joe Stike Leather. Danny Chavez, who doesn't race much Nitro, who was freaking fast, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they just. Um, I think they just started running a new car because for a while. Um, you know, Danny used to be on the X-Ray team and, you know, he's more of a 10 scale guy. So he's now with the Schumacher team. And I believe eight scale wise, he went to HB. Yes. I'm and TZO sure. tires. So they're not yeah, they went TZO, TZO tires. Yeah. yeah, they went TZO. And then we saw Jason Smith, Mad Maddie Long, who had a great weekend and Jeremy Talent, your top five. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm saying this because all of this meant points, right? Yeah. And then Mark West, uh, he he was very fast. in Oh, Nitro. my pick, my pick, man. Yes, he was on your team, right? Yes. Yes. He TQ'd Nitro Buggy and was doing great. He was actually in the lead, and then his throttle servo left the chat. We're going to talk about that because we have a video of that. It's actually very funny. Yeah. Just picture Um, Frankenstein and fast forward. We are going to talk about that. We are going to talk about that. So uh, Mark West was super fast in um, Sportsman Nitro Buggy, but not he he had so much problems in e-buggy. I think his e-buggy, it's it's he reminds me a lot of uh, Chase and Ehrlich in a sense of he cares about his uh, nitro buggy and his e-buggy. He just says, just, just go, just go. Okay. Now that, so was, he doesn't, that was, yeah. And it showed. And yes, unfortunately of course, it showed. Of course. Yeah. And of course we had, let's just go look at e-buggy right quick. Where is it? Come on, lefty. Find e-buggy. There we go. S-Works brought to you by S-Works. I should know this stuff. Hmm. And uh, Cole Ogden again, once was the toast of time. Spencer Hackett, yeah. David Olsen in third. Uh, Camden Lime, and then you was fifth. You so you, you, had, you did pretty good in e buggy. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, good results for you. Anyway, so going into the following day, uh, we had um, so everybody was going to get double A mains. No, sorry. Each e buggy, each the electrics got doubles. Right. No, they got, did they get double A mains? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, wow. So the they got double got A mains and triple A mains, right? No, just double. Oh, no. So, okay. Sorry. So the B mains didn't get, they just got 10 minute mains. Right. Right. That's what I thought. So the B mains got 10 minute mains. <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> excuse me, we got triple main, triple, uh, triple, sorry, double 10 minute A mains for the A finals. Uh, let's see. I think every Nitro A main was 30 minutes. I believe so. Yes. And let's look at some of the B mains here. So Nitro Buggy B main was twenty minutes. So I, you know, we didn't really have a we didn't have no C main. So everybody no. got twenty or t- you know twenty minute or thirty minute main. So that was good as well. Oh yeah. And, and then double electric mains for the finalists for everybody. We did use Ifmar style uh, tiebreakers. So there was no mistaking that from the from the ten scale uh, nationals that we had. There was Ifmar style. No. So it was your best single. Lap. Yes, it was your it best was, single of your best run. It, your best it was run the best, best, run. best single point. So the way it was explained to me is um, obviously for e buggy, we'll just do e buggy for example. So mm-hmm. um, Spencer won both A mains. So mm-hmm. he got one and one. So that settled it. Camden Lime got second and second. So he got second. Um, when it came down to third and fourth, Cole Ogden had a third. And I had a third. The difference was his third place finish in A1 was faster than my third place finish in A2. So he got third and then I got fourth. Okay. And then the same thing with, you know, so on and so forth. So uh, we have the start of the Nitro Pro Nitro Buggy A main. Uh, this is a section right here where you see right now that Spencer yeah. Hackett was just so freaking fast in. He was able to tiptoe through this, keep his car up oh, there off I the am. rough stuff. Land. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, I am way back there. Oh, that was hard. Oh, that was a hard yeah, crash that, right there. That was gnarly. Yeah. Oops. That was uh Hackert and, and then, then yeah. throw him down right on pit line. Yeah, so Spencer had to 
climb back. And there you go. Hey. I just saw you. Oh, I think I'm like I finally got it back up to third on that one. I think I don't know. So this is where Camden like took the lead, and I thought that he was going to win this. Mm-hmm. I really did. He was yeah. really fast, and as you can see, as he's going through this little section right here, he was doing like the Spencer Hacker line, but Spencer Hacker was the master of this. He was able to keep yeah. that off the yeah, pipe. Spencer had already learned that line while yep. Camden was trying to mimic it. But Right. He I was mean, still well, fast with her. The, bi- the biggest thing for Camden, Camden has speed. The biggest thing for Camden, he's got to find his consistency, and mm-hmm. I know he can. Mm-hmm. I know he can. He's just... Uh, that. I think that's 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 one of the things... Camden has the speed. He's just got to get his consistency down. Well, there you oh, there right I am. Mm-hmm. Peekaboo. <laughs> yeah. So this this was like a whole entire minefield. People were getting stuck oh, yeah. on the face of that jump. Yeah, the, that? The, like it was, became oh, a Oh, God, dude, it was so dug out. There was literally an e-buggy that got stuck on top of it. See, I'm riding to the outside. I, could, I lost the pipe. There was no pipe there. It was buried. I'm like, okay, this is smooth now. Yeah, because I'm out there with the freaking turn marshal. That's why it's so smooth. So... During qualifying, that section was equally as rough, and Cole oh, was able. To, yeah. There you Hold go. You wide open, f- you'll be fine. Yeah, there you, yeah, go. you okay. did a few cartwheels, and right. through that section that we was talking about, that really the minefield section. Uh, this line, Cole well, was now, able to Now, when you say minefield, fe- minefield section, you got to narrow down the field. Which this one, one right here, this whole that, section that right one. here. Yeah, and dude, then there coming was a through her massive hole. There was a massive hole on that drop down to where if you actually hit it, you would you would actually jump into the face and it would just be bad news. So you either had to find inside or outside. Yes. Cause th- this, this was the whole thing of like, it was getting so beat up the whole motto less is more. That was no, that was definitely true. But right. Uh, so but, we yeah. saw Spencer able to just keep his car on the inside of so many of these lines. Here's let's see if curls, you see how curls using that. Yeah, that see one. right there was so blown out. Like mm-hmm. if you, if you had a tire that grabbed, if you barely touched the wheel, it would either grab traction or grab a hole. See, Cole hugged it too tight, and he mm-hmm. just t- tied the pipe there. Good, good, Marshall Manny. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it, you had to be very gentle with your trigger and very gentle with your throttle. See, and and Days just did the same thing mm-hmm. I did. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Party foul. Somebody was, get Jake. Somebody get Jake. That was Jake. Anybody? Yeah, I think Ryan does a because he was not out at this at this race. Yeah, at the yeah. End of this I, race. He was. I think he was having um, uh, tuning issues or something. Is that Mark Moon going out to get his car? I think uh, yeah, oh yes, it was. Yeah, Mark was his uh, was helping out Mr. Days. Okay, yeah. so we had this main. It was a, I thought it was a great main to the end because Heckert, uh I don't think he. I can't remember if he ran away with it or not. I know that him and Cam. No, him and Camden battled almost to the very end. Yeah, and, and then, I think um, it came down to the last pit stop. Right, because so what Camden had to do was get out in front of. So Hackard had to come in one more time. Like he either had to come in one more time for splash and go or just risk it, right? Mm-hmm. He probably could have went, but Camden had to get out in front of him and get about a five to six second lead in front of him to right. capitalize to get over that. And um I'm he just was trying... now watching this for the first time because I I, I oh, didn't okay. see. Yeah. So but... he, he almost did, and then he just started making, I think he made that one or two mistakes, and then that's kind of put him to the back. And then that allowed Hecker to come in. I just remember Scott's down there and Pitts is like, got the fuel gone. You can see he's nervous. He's like, yeah. oh, no. and then Hecker's like, no, not this lap, not this lap. And then finally he came in full of splash. And I thought that um, he drove very well and uh, a well deserved win. I think he did, a, he did a good job. Yeah, that, he, the, he was. Who, who, everybody that won classes at this race, it was mm-hmm. a well deserved win because like, let me tell you, it was, it, yeah, it was just gnarly. Absolutely yeah. gnarly. It was uh, it was a good race, man. I, I thought that I thought that the A main of this race was really good. Let's go through some of the results. So let's look at the pro A main anyway and see who won this. Um, well, we know it was Spencer Hackett, Camden Lime, David Olson, Ryan Ram, Patrick Rossiter. So he came fifth. Well done. I did. I did. Thank you. Stike Lather, Ken Rand, Cole Ogden, Don Elliott, Brandon Melton, Kristen Payhood, uh, Dave Carmandy, Matt Nervoso, Evan Vale, Ryan Daze. So. Cole Ogden just kind of. He was. I don't super know fast. what happened. I think. I think from what I understand, I think Dustin McCutcheon was pitting him, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know if there there was, oh, he there was out. a problem. Yeah, he did flame out, but I can't remember the reason. If 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 um, you know that they're they're they're. He said on it. He said so. The good thing is, sorry to cut you off. No, 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 uh, no, no. Please, it's your show. No, no, you but I want to talk. Rain me in. 
Rain me in now. No, I'm because sorry. he did talk about this because you wouldn't have been able to hear this because you was racing. Okay. So right. we did have uh, Jared Barden was there with us, and he was doing he he was in the co-hosting with me, uh, and he was also doing pit reporting, which I thought was a great asset because we was able to get into the pits and find out what happened. So he went and he talked. There's Dustin McCutcheon right there, and he said that. Uh, that was, Brent, hit, that was Brent pitting for Camden, by the yes. way, for those who don't know. But the uh, the big dude, the big dude was uh, Justin McCutcheon. Oh, yeah, 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 pit. yeah. Fluffy. Yes. Okay, that's what we call him? I didn't know that. Well, well, he is Fluffy. Whether they call him Fluffy or not, he's Fluffy. Well, I'm Fluffy, too. So it's not more fluffiness. Yeah. L Fluffy. So, so uh, <laughs> he said <laughs> he said that uh, they kind of, he, th- he, he took the complete blame. He says, yeah, I ran coal out of fuel. I didn't get enough fuel in him in the first time. And then they thought they had bent a shock shaft in that collision with Hackert. Mm. So um, they, uh, you know, he had to Dustin check it out. Dustin is the one with the headset. Yes, yes. And, and Brent is the one in the blue beach RC track, for people that didn't know. Yes. Uh, but I thought oh, it was yes. a great A-Main. And then the intermediate Nitro main, uh, we were slated to have a good, I thought we was going to have a good battle between Danny Chavez and Joe Steichlather. But then they got into that, Right by that double, we see Danny Chavez waving on Brandon. That's how people were pumped. Mm-hmm. People were getting into this. These two had a great battle. This is how they did. And, they did. Uh, and they were actually having a good time. Yes, too. they were up there laughing, and they were going ebb and flow, touch and go. It was a good race between these two. I don't think people can. Un- I don't think you can understand. You under how fast they were coming on that straightaway and taking this corner. Earlier on, like I was, I was watching Hackett. He was maybe an inch off this pipe. He had to adjust that. Obviously, as they got holes. They're the, you know, got some real big holes near the end of that curve, but it was a really good battle between these guys. I thought yeah, the old, the, I was saying like there's holes everywhere and it's so rough. Why don't we just build a cabbage patch and pit lane and just even it out? <laughs> and might these as well. Good. What, these... Which, by the way, I've, I've got a little thing on the side that says recording error. Open the recording tab to learn more. I don't want to touch anything. I'm no, don't touch sure anything. Cool. Don't touch everything. We're no, recording God, no, 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 I'm not. I'm we, not. I'm we, okay, we, we, we had to do so much just to get you in here. Uh, Dude, don't use Safari. What am I using? Safari, because it's the only thing that works. It is anything that works. <laughs> is it anything that works? I was shocked. It, All right. Yeah, Intermediate know. Nitro Buggy we saw. So like I was saying, uh, Camden, um, Joe Steichlather and De- and Daniel, was. I was thought he was going to have a vicious battle. Danny Chavez. They got hit. They hit each other right there, like a vicious hit. And then that actually knocked Daniel out of the race. And you know what happened? He actually broke his pipe. Yes, so we, yes. Scott White was telling me like the the stinger actually tore off the end of the pipe. Oh, the well, I, I'm yeah. seeing that happen before. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. so uh, we was I I like having the the pit reporting because we can find out what's going on. Uh, when you're exactly. out there calling a the race, you don't know. I know I did that for RCGP for a few races, so that was cool. But in uh in nitro intermediate nitro buggy, we saw Cameron Saxon, Katie Carmandy, who climbed her way from tenth. Because Katie, at one point, she 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 was there battling it out with fifth and fourth, and um she made a great comeback from tenth, and uh, she ended up finishing second. And also, sure. um, Maddie Long, who only got four laps, unfortunate for her. She was uh, yeah. Maddie Maddie had a tough weekend as far as equipment goes. I mean, it had had her stuff. Not I mean, she was having some freak breaks. Like I talked to Wayne, her daddy. And mm-hmm. she said, and he said that in one of her cars, I forgot which one, that the ball stud that holds the little turnbuckle to the servo actually mm-hmm. snapped off in the bell crank. I mean, mm-hmm. that's just a freak accident. So, had her equipment been able to keep up with her, um, she she definitely would have been uh, would would have been a contender. I mean, because you she know, drove I have to say, usual. Th- I have to say that this young lady is improving every race I've seen. I saw at North Georgia Shootout. So. Uh, I saw and her, her stepfather Rusty has Wicked. been racing a long time. I mean, I remember him from the Bulky Creek days. Rusty, mm, Rusty Mihalik. I remember that name too. I remember. Yeah, and he actually Mihalik. has his own track. Mihalik. Yeah, he has his own track up in Virginia called Leaned Out Raceway. We're not having Mad Maddie's birthday party September 9th this past Ooh. this weekend coming up. Oh, just okay. a shameless plug for that. It's well, this happy weekend. Birthday, Maddie. No, next weekend. Next weekend. Okay. Sorry. Well, put uh, that birthday wish on layaway. Okay. <laughs> so I. Intermediate intermediate points. Cameron Saxon got some. Po- he, he wasn't Evan Vale's uh, Evan Vale's team. Yeah, he uh, and Evan have been buddies for years. I know. Didn't help him out too much because Evan had a really really bad main. And then uh, let's go to Sportsman Nitro Buggy results. 
Um, let's go. Here we go. So we saw John DeSanti, who had a great weekend. He yeah, won on Nitro Buggy, Nitro Truggy. David Talent came second. Corey Humphreys, who I met at Masters of Dirt last year, who did not have any eight scale cars. He just had like a mini B, two mini mm-hmm. Bs, and a t- some 10 scale cars. And now he's like, Lefty, I now have 12 RC cars. I'm <laughs> so much money in the hole. And I said, Hey, buddy, you can't take it when you go. Enjoy it. Uh, Dennis Brew and Dennis Allison finishing fifth. Uh, man, I thought that they did a good job as well. And uh, I thought the e truggy mains were good too. I, I have to say that Ryan Rand's Techno e truggy was, was the absolute best car out of every single car I saw there this past weekend. He was that, on another level. His Techno e truck looked really good. And I have to say that those guys, uh, I, I know they, I have to say this, but then guys at Ogo, they have found themselves they're, a damn good they're, truggy they're, tire. They're, they're, yeah, they're 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 coming along. They're coming along. The flowers, the flowers boys. Yeah. At PC Hobbies have really been pushing that stuff. Them and Curtis Crumus, they've really been pushing those tires. And you know, the tire game market is just being flooded with all these other companies. And you know, it, it's hard to um, it's hard to stand out. But you uh, like Brent's? Did you miss see Brent's uh, pit strategy there? I'll, I'll show you back. Pit, pit. Yeah, yeah. Back, back that up real quick. My ADD was in the wrong spot. Yeah, Let's but see. you are about the flowers. They have. I'll show you Brent's pit. Yeah. Uh, I that car was so hooked up. Mm-hmm. Them truggy tires that they have, I think they're new. They Twisters, really I think they're called, or something like something that. Something like that. I don't yeah. know, but all I know is that that man's truck looked the best out of everybody's. Every vehicle that I saw there, that e truck was the best. Yeah, that 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 was definitely as as gnarly as that guy. That was definitely a truggy track. Definitely so a truggy track. Let's let's watch. Let's critique Brent's uh, pitting skills. He's actually okay. got very good form. Yeah, he's Comes pitting in, Camden. Excellent catch. Nice. Fill it up. See, oh, see that he does out. a he does a swing back and then lets it go. So he's getting right. full momentum. Yes. Very good pit stop. Very good pit stop. Very All right. Anything else you want to talk about before we, we move on that, that as a racer, you racing on this, this type of track and whatnot. And you uh, had you had to be there in order to understand how gnarly it was. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the next event that they plan to have there. You guys better sign up for it because especially in the South with covered events, guaranteed races, there's no excuse that you shouldn't come. No excuse. Yeah, and the next event will be fall roll. So From that's what I understand, the- yes. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, rest in peace, Badlands RC Supercross. Unfortunately. Yeah, they are that that race track is gonna cease to exist because the yes. the county is taking it over to make yeah, parking yeah. for the for- from what I understand, from what I was told, um, Brent has always had trouble. And, and even Monty, Jason, and Kevin had problems with uh, the soccer bombs because they, uh, they wanted every single bit of that parking lot. From, well, from what I understand, some of those soccer bombs got on the city council with the city of Socastee, and mm-hmm. that's it. That's, that's, it. that's a little bit too bad. Uh, it not is. surprised. Just As, more more red tape nonsense starting to encroach on racetracks. I know we're dealing with it in Savannah. Brent just had to deal with it. Um, um, Lance is somewhat dealing it with Southside, but he's more dealing with the EPA that uh, that they're encroaching on him. But yeah, unfortunately, a uh, lot of lot of government o- outreach um, overreach on these uh, county properties. Unfortunately, yes. But also, I would say next year, if you're on the fence of coming to this event. Uh, and you're not sure about how the RC program side of it works. No. I hope you guys. If you're understand. on the fence, jump over the fence and get there. Okay, yes. that's all I'm saying. And I, I can't stress how much I enjoyed that. I really did enjoy the draft, and it really I just ended know, up being fun. Yes, for the first time that they've done it, it, it worked out. Everybody understood it. I have to give a shout out to little Donnie Williams because Donnie Williams was really upset that he did not get picked for a team. And you know what I told him when he said that? I said, you know what? Uh, you go out there and show them why they should pick you, right? He runs e-buggy. Right. And that young man, he uh, he had a bad first uh, first A1 yet. He, f- he finished, well, not, he finished, he, he finished fifth. But I think he started way down the line. I think he was uh-huh. like 12th or something like that. When it's, when it's he got in the podium of one of the classes. I think it was he E-Truggy. Got, I think. No, he came third. And uh, he, he came third in uh, e-buggy. E-buggy. Okay. Right. So he came, he had a five in A1 and then a two in A3. And man, he was so happy. He grabbed oh, a microphone God. from me and he says, 
And I said, see, this is why people should have picked you. He's like, see, you should have picked me. And his family <laughs> were watching. Oh, yeah, and- his, his mom and his grandma. And I will say, give uh, I got to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Williams, who volunteer marshaled a lot. So oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. And also to um, oh, uh, Will Crow for volunteer. Marshall. He volunteered quite a lot. Vol- Those are all MSN drivers. I know they represent yeah, uh, all, Mark Santa all Maria. Mark. Yeah. And they're and, all uh, techno boys as well. Oh, yeah. And uh, they had they were just I was super happy to see this young man, this young man do good. And I think this event is really good for these young kids, you know, especially if they can get paired up with one of these pros and learn from them and just see and be with them and hang out with them. I really thought this was a, I, I, I once again, I give that man there in the blue shirt a lot of credit for coming up with this idea. Uh, yeah. I got to see it. I got to experience it. And I thought it was absolutely great. Uh, I wanted to um, shout out to everybody that came and participated. It was good. I think everybody that was there had a good time. Yes, a lot of people might say the track got super rough, but this is off road, and I it's know that way off the road. Yes, way <laughs> off the road. But I know that uh, Lucas. But it was, was good. I know Lucas was deep in thought the whole weekend about how they can do it better. So I, I have a feeling for Fall Brawl, it's going to be even better. We'll be there. Uh, I mean, I mean, for a first race, having only that as a gremlin i mean that, mm-hmm. that's nothing that's an easy mm-hmm. fix yeah because nobody knew how this dart was going to be right um no. oh. a lot of the uh a lot of the north carolina racers told me it was like uh wilkesboro which is uh which is like an old school offer track that they had up there mm-hmm. i think i think Not that name of that track is overcash I think no it was w w r c r something like w w it, it doesn't O-R-C-R, exist no more no, no, no. Like no, no. Bobby Moore used to actually run this track at for a little bit at some point. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, right. it's, it's been a while since I've been in North Carolina, so I Yeah, it's up. been a while since it's been open. So yeah. I, I thought it was a great event. I, I implore you to come next year if you can. Uh it's it's you can fly into Charlotte and drive there, or most people will drive there. Uh, I look Fayette, forward to Fayetteville would probably be a little closer if there's right. an airport in Fayetteville. Also with it with Fallbro being there, we know that over the years, Fallboro has had that gremlin of, you know, being the first weekend of December, always getting some rain. Yes. So we won't have to worry about that now. Nope. And Brian Burnett has already said when he builds the Fallboro layout, it will keep its Badlands Supercross theme. Okay. So yeah. So this was, this, this layout was very tame because, you know, he wanted to see how the dirt behaved. And in the long run, when the layout was smooth, it was fairly easy, but adding all the gnarliness, uh, mm-hmm. There, there was the challenge. So he said, definitely, he's going to go a little more extreme for the bad la- for the uh, fall brawl layout, which again is okay. the first weekend of December. Okay, so we'll be there, I believe. Uh, I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to it. It's Dad's uh, birthday, so that's how I remember. Okay, it's always on Dad's birthday. So I wanted to talk about a few things that happened. I know the internet went a little bit crazy over. Uh, let me see if I can play this. Uh, let me see if this is the no. Uh, is this the pit stop where we saw? I was looking for the video of the crazy pit stop that we had. Oh, from Monty? Yes. Um, yeah, you played it yesterday on the uh, uh, the waffle. Which, by the way, congratulations, Mr. Steve. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, congratulations to Mr. Steve. No, I, yeah, did I yeah. play it on the waffle? I don't think I did. Yes, you did. I, I, I know I watched it last night. It was there. It uh, was there. Well, I, no, I don't think it was me because I don't have it. I don't Who think played I played it, it last night. Uh, I think I'm it was sure. just on Facebook. I'm trying to find it on Facebook myself right now. Okay. So, uh, but I am okay. going to play something. So I know a lot of people were upset about this um, <laughs> because we saw us. We saw. I think it was Monty Rita who came flying in. Yeah. And, tri- and, yeah. The the pit lane became a jump. Which you know, going back to the old school days, a lot of a lot of tracks actually used to put a wheelie bar. In the mm-hmm. end, uh, at the beginning of pit lane to prevent that, and um, yeah, that uh, wow, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Monty, was... Monty, Monty's car came into pit lane so hard he could have almost pitted himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think I think uh, the throttle servo he whiskey throttled it a little bit, and uh, well, he said the servo got there. stuck, and that was his yeah. issue. Now, um, granted, Monty, Monty, Kevin, and I think Jason, all three of them have not even cranked their cars up, and I'm. At least four months, at least, if not eight, because they, you know, they've just been busy with life. So it it was either the spring sting or the last fall brawl was the last time they raced. So, you know, stuff had just been sitting around and oops. I'm actually trying to look for the video here that I had. uh, Yeah. 
I, I, I could have sworn you Facebook. played it last night. I could have sworn you did. Because well, anyway, I, that was I, I just have to say that it was a little bit dangerous. It was an absolute gorgeous catch by whoever caught that car. Yeah, I don't know I, how I they say, did that. I want to say, um, I think who was pitting money was Wendell. I think Wendell Smith was pitting him, Jason's dad. Oh, man, he snatched that car out of the air. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to play a video of another incident where we saw. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. so a lot of people who didn't buy the hill, it got stuck wide open or we had throttle issues and all that type of stuff. So mm-hmm. another incident happened and we was watching this while it happened and it involves you. Yep. And this was hilarious because we had a good laugh about this. This, afterwards. this was my pit. This was Mark West. Um, unfortunately, um, his servo overheated. And it was, you know, cutting in and out like, you know, it was shaking worse than I was. It was literally in the car like this, and he wasn't even doing anything. It was so hot that the throttle servo horn actually burned my thumb. Let me try and find it. So, so, just picture, okay, I'll I'll give you the real explanation. So, Mark's headset was, like, really stretched out, so it wasn't tight on my head. So, I had to run, but keep my head still, and it looked like... It looked like one of those runs where you shouldn't trust a fart. So just just get ready to <laughs> laugh your behind off because the this way I hilarious. ran, yeah, this this yeah this this. So just I was in. I'm, this just I'm there calling the I'm race. This okay. I'm there calling the race, and I'm like, oh yeah, Patrick. He was winning the race by far, and I'm like, oh yeah, Patrick's got a good pick. His guy's gonna win this. He's gonna do well. And then this guy came in so fast. Yeah. Right. Mark was came like, on what the is pit he lane. doing? Mark came on the pit lane, and when he let off, the car didn't. I mean, he treated my hand like a toll and just hit it and kept going. You'll see this. Wham! So it's like, up, up. Well, that escalated quickly. And even Big Mark's looking at me like, what the hell just happened? So here I go. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. I think I, was, I thought I saw a candy bar on the track or something. That's why I was running so hard. So let's, I, let's have a look at that. Let me... Uh... Yeah, yeah, replay that me, one more time. Let me mute that. This was so fun. This car came flying. Look, yeah. look at it right now. And yep. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Did you mean to do that? I'm like, hold on. I thought he meant to do it. I thought he just missed your spot. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, did you mean to do that? He's like, no, I'm not doing that. So that's when I ran over there and I immediately tried to go for the throttle servo, but it was twitching like crazy. So I just turned it off manually. And then held the throttle servo and just killed it with my hand. Because I'm like, no, this thing. He says, is there any way saving it? I'm like, no, dude. The friggin' servo's burning up hot and it's switching. So we're, we're done. We're done. Let's see that again. How yeah. fast One more time. Pits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was like, what the heck? Yeah. What the yeah. hell? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Sir. 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 Oh, my gosh. Mark, I'm right here, dude. Where are you going? I know. That was crazy. And even um, the look on Big Mark's face, he's just like, <laughs> he didn't know what to say. I didn't know what was going on. Um, no. But that brought an end. We, I think we finished up around 4.30-ish. Yeah, I think. about. And then that's that's always the sad thing, right? When you do these events, yeah. you know, everybody gets there on Thursday. It's always, you know, everybody's excited to be there. And then by when it's time for the event to be over, Sunday People are gone. Winding down. Yeah. Yeah. So we started packing up and then the floodgates opened. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. Yeah. The water was ankle deep. Like literally we had to go find Lance's gas can, which was across the, the parking lot. Mm-hmm. It literally floated away. Your boat, your RC boat. It was almost high enough because you had about a what? About a four, four foot stand it was sitting on. And the water got about halfway up the stand. Yeah, I thought we was gonna see it floating somewhere and see it test its uh its its buoyancy. And yeah. that and we it, it tested us because we couldn't um it kind of messed us up, right? Because the plan was to uh pack up and then you know head on the road and get down to Lake City, spend the night in Lake. Well, I Danny and I well, were gonna spend the night, spend the night in Savannah. Y'all were gonna drive at least the four hours to Savannah, drop okay. me off, and then y'all were gonna stay there. Yeah, stay in the camper. So yeah. and instead we had to wait. Um we made it to the rain stop. We packed everything up. Everything was there. And if people knew the amount of of shit that we had, dude, that, there's a fine line. And and I hope you do. You guys don't mind this word. There's a fine line between being retarded and being ready for everything. <laughs> and Lance, Lance, like, I mean, Lance gets on to me about packing light. 
Well, the only difference is everything that he pats, you actually use. I just pack because I worry that, you know, I'm, I'm, I like to use my own kitchen sink. So that's why I pack it too. I mean, I don't know. Dude, he brings, he brings a whole production. He does. He does. He, 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 he is all about not having to depend on anybody else. He wants to have everything in his own control to make sure that just in case he has everything. He had a, uh, and I must admit, Lance, I really like my new setup, and I got nice new monitors. He had all that set up for me. I had a yes. fan set up. Um, oh, yeah. So he had, like, you know, just the amount of stuff that we had to pack up, including Danny's stuff, wrapping up wires, uh, packing Danny's all that cables. stuff. Oh, my Lord, dude. People just don't know how much stuff goes into what, 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 what no, we do behind the scenes. Just everything set up and situated is at least three hours. At mm-hmm. least three hours. And then, uh, obviously, we couldn't pack that stuff up. Because it was raining so hard. No, so but we, we ended at least up, gathered it up. Yes. But and then still, we ended we just up. Couldn't take it. Yeah, we ended up just sitting off in a trailer, having food, camper, and then the rain stopped for a little while. Then I almost got attacked by the Black Panther furry man eating <laughs> frog of Lake Wakama. <laughs> the frog was smaller than the computer. Hey, apps. hey. I just went outside and people are looking at it. You know, you're, 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 pr- you're proof of why some people don't like to go to the beach. Because if I can't see my feet, I get scared. Some guy said, I actually scream equally as loud if a great white is about to tap me or if a piece of seaweed touches my foot. Because you're just like on the boat. I'm like, get hey. on the boat. <laughs> What's the hey, I just saw toes. people look, look at this and I saw something jumping and I was like, ah. Yeah. And then everybody, I was like, what is it? I don't know if a snake was chasing you it or what. jumped on top of the camper. Hey, it, it scared me. It scared me. Uh, it did. Man eating black puma, furry. <laughs> Black Panther furry frog of Lake Wakama. And then it was it was just a frog, but I don't know. I thought there was something else. It moved. It was something that moved and it startled you. Okay. It startled it, you. It, I know. I don't know. Uh I, I if you want I mean, if, you if want I was in Florida. Star- no, if you want a big animal to startle you, go down to Australia because down there the spiders pay rent. Okay. Well, that's why I call Florida for Australia. It has everything that can kill you. Yeah, yeah, I, I've walked into the bathroom before, and there was a big roach. I said, "Oh, geez, I didn't know somebody was in here." Holy crap! <laughs> That's a big but, mustache. Jeez. Yes. Uh, but finally, we packed up. We ended up leaving about eight the next day, getting on the road. Yeah, I think Dude, we were I up actually, at like six or something. Yes, I actually got to the airport at nine forty-five p.m. God. That was a long drive. Oh man! And luckily, my flight wasn't. Um, my so flight wasn't. Yeah, my flight left at midnight. It did the, the pilot put on the afterburners. We got her about two. Dude, when I got out, I went through immigration, everything. I was like, choom, right through there. And then my bag was the second bag on the belt. I was like, whoo, thank you. Boom. I That's got home. Awesome. All, I got home all 3 30. So it's shower, only, it's only a from. two hour flight from DR to Miami? Uh, hour and 45 minutes. Oh, it's not bad. Yeah. When they when bad. they go fast, when they got a good jet stream yeah, behind yeah, them. Yeah, when even the pilot's like, like I gotta go. Yes, he's like, I'm tired of this. So <laughs> It was a great event. I want to thank uh, everybody that came up and showed me some love. I had a lot of fun with you guys as we now go to more events. Uh, you know, as a great little team of yeah. friends. Uh, me, you, Gene. Sorry, I should, shouldn't should put me first, but Lance, Danny, you, Gene, and then myself. It's, no, no, it's no. You're, you're, you're higher up than me and Gene. We, we just work horses. Well, we, I, we... I was thinking of pr- a proper English. You never put yourself first. Oh, news to me. <laughs> I, I live in the South. I don't have any. Uh, yeah, me and these boys here, we gonna go up there. Yeah. Well, it's 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 fun because we have a lot of fun together. We put on. I think <clears throat> what Danny's doing is getting better and better. Danny's uh, setting the bar. Yes, Danny is um, setting the bar. I wanna I wanna say thank you to everybody that supported us to come there. Uh, that came up and said hello to me. Uh, that a lot of people came up and said I would really like what you did at Wicked Weekend as well. So I know we're on the right track there. And um, thanks to Brent for having us there and putting on this event. I, I look forward to next year's event. I look forward to Masters of Dirt in uh, a few in October, and of course yep. Fall Brawl in December. And then you got AMS in there in between in November, oh, uh, yeah. Veterans Day weekend. We got a busy schedule ahead of us, oh, yeah. and then of course we have Georgia Peach State coming up in a few weeks. Not even a few weeks, a couple weeks, like two weeks. Uh, two weeks, yeah, not uh, two weeks from tomorrow. Yes. And that's what that waffle was about last night. Congratulations to Mr. Steve. Uh, I want to shout out to Jared Barden for coming on and doing pit interviews with us and helping me out uh, with the commentating as well. 
And yeah, man, shout out to to everybody that came on and raced, you know, yeah, and had fun and participated in the draft and was a good sport about that because I thought it was a great concept. I like it. I look forward to next year. I think it's going to be even bigger next year. Getting everyone involved, building the fellowship, and actually using social skills. It was amazing. All right. And so you have racing this weekend. You're going to Phil Hart? I do, yeah. We, yeah, we got our second round of our point series tomorrow, so I'll be race director. I may even I, – I just uh, – actually, let me turn the camera, show all my stuff. See my short course that I just got done building. That's Dad's GT car. My okay. 10 scales and my 8 scales are still at the front door. They, Where does your they, dad race GT? He built it thinking that he was going to go down to South Florida with those guys, but he built it, practiced within the driveway, and then gave up on it. Is it electric or no? It's nitro? a nitro. It's okay. it's a it's actually an S words. Okay, nice, nice. GTs a I like GT. I, I have a GT here. It's you can't see it. I have a Mugen one. Yeah, that I need to put together. <laughs> All right, Patrick. I thank you for coming on. Uh, I will see you at the Georgia Peach State Classic. I think we'll probably get together after that and do a recap. It's looking to be a good event. We have uh, a couple of pros going to that. We have Jared Tebow, Lutz, Seth and Dalen Wiggins coming. Jones. Jones as well. Borden. So we got a who? A oh, board on Joey, jo- Joey Borden. Oh. Yep. All right. So we got a good decent amount of guys coming. Uh, and that's another race with a lot of races going on. We have the Worlds. We have the yeah, Southern Classic. The same weekend. Yep. We have so, Southern yeah. Classic that's not too far. Well, it's. Oh, yeah. 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 Down in Louisiana. So uh, we look forward to that. And we look forward to seeing everybody there. I have stickers for people. So come see me. Danny and I will be doing the, I will be doing the commentating. Danny will be doing the. the uh, the visual effects, and of course, Lance will be there. You go, actually, have some more bigger ones now, four okay. by fours. Cool, but Patrick, thank you for your time. I had a f- lot of fun this weekend. We had a lot of fun <clears throat> together, uh, all of us hanging out. And uh, thank you everybody for supporting what we do because we can't do none of this without you, myself, and uh, the people that uh, Danny and everybody that does this. And um, I look forward to seeing you, know, you all at, Pe- at Georgia Peach State. Thanks for having me, Keenan. I've been looking forward to this. I hope I uh, I didn't <laughs> I didn't cut you off too many times. I do. No, that's it. fine. That's but fine. Hey, but hey, nice for the glory. Electric pays the bills, but ten scale tells the stories. I gotta think of a truggy one. Tr- mm. I just this is for Charlie Mac. Bruggy is the new truggy. <laughs> Bruggy. Bruggy. Charlie Mac's gonna Bruh. go insane. Bruh. Bruggy. Bruggy. It looks like it's really getting hard to tell if those things are buggies or truggies. I, I, I got to tell Charlie, I do miss the standard bodies, but the two, I mean, it's just the handling differences in the bruggy body makes all the work. And not to mention, it's easier on your pit guy because your shot tower is exposed so he can catch you. You got to think about that too. But speaking of bodies, we had a Baja bug body on a truggy this weekend. Josh Garbett busted out an old Volkswagen Beetle bug body that was originally on like a, a Losi LST. And he put it on his truggy. Why? Because he's Josh Garbett. That's why. Yeah. And it looked cool. It looked cool out there. It did. All right. Patrick, thank you for coming on. I had a great recap with you. And I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. And we're going to have some fun at the Georgia Peach State Classic. Yes. And tell your airport to behave. No more threats and no more little pissant storms. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. If it's going to be a storm, be a storm. But I'm glad it wasn't a storm at the same time. Right. All right, buddy. Well, I'll talk later. And thank you. Thank you. Good fun. Have fun at Pete Phil Hard tomorrow. I'm going to try. And everybody else, stay safe. And um, we will see you all soon. All right, buddy. Take care. Take care, bud. All right. Thank you, Patrick, for your time. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, always a fun time with Patrick. Avid racer. I've known him for many years. The RC program was an awesome race. I'm looking forward to Fall Brawl there uh, in December. And if you guys are on the fence about the RC program, check it out next year. It's really good. I enjoyed it. And um, I think you will too, especially the draft thing. I really enjoyed that. Um, not much more to say. No rants, no hot race, hot laps, nothing like that. Shout out to the hot race once again, man. Shout out to the hot race and John Carlos Canas. Much deserved victory for JCC. He's been on fire on great form. And um, I, I just know that they're super happy about that. Check out hot race at JTP stores in America if you want to get some. And uh, of course, you know where to get them in Europe. And thank you, Hot Race, for all their continued support, Nicola and everybody over there, Robert. And, uh, yeah, congratulations, JCC, man. Good job to you. Uh, Once again, thank you to everybody that uh, came up and said hello to me at the RC program. It was really good to meet you guys and and the people that enjoyed what we've done at Wicked Weekend. Shout out to Jared Barner for coming on. Finally got to meet him. 
his help in the pit interviews as well as co-commentating. Uh, and good luck at the Thunder Alley race this weekend and, and the 12 scale worlds. I might be at the 12 scale worlds. I'm not sure if I'm going to be there. Uh, but good luck with that, Jared. Um, shout out to Lance McDonald for getting me there. I appreciate it. Uh, Lance has some big plans as well. Always shout out to Danny Paz for his hard work. Shout out to my boy, Blake Baker, man, for helping me out and uh, surprising me with something really cool for my son. I really appreciate that. Uh, we'll see more of that once it gets there and my son uh, gets to unbox it. So I appreciate that, man. Just, you know, one of them, one of just, you know, sometimes you meet people in RC. I have a few friends like this that you just end up being cool with. And uh, Blake's become one of those guys. And actually, his, I'll be traveling with him and the Colworths up to uh, Georgia Peach Day Classic here. So uh, we do have some other content coming out this past, this next weekend. Uh, also, oh, I forgot. If you haven't already, get over there and check out Lucas Lawrence documentary. That thing is badass. It's getting some good numbers. Go check it out. It's a great documentary for the Nationals. Congratulations, Lucas. Uh, that's my boy, too. Boy, it's good to see Lucas as well. I'll see him. I'll see him probably at, uh, I don't know if he's going to Peach State, but I will see him at the Fall Brawl, obviously. And I think Lucas was very happy of what they'd done at the race, at the track as well. So with that said, I am going to stop jibber-jabbering. Uh, good luck to everybody that's racing this weekend. We will have a European recap coming out next week and i'm hoping i'm hoping fingers crossed the v-day said he would that he will come on next week so we can interview the v-day that will probably be released or i will definitely have a podcast release in the week that i'm traveling i'm going to the hydrogen gp look out for my content from that i'll be sharing the links for that it's going to be good to see the rc racing tv guys again matt if you listen to this which i know you ain't i would like to get a a, a, a shirt so don't forget i know you guys european size is a little bit smaller so i need a big boy american shirt please and um great coverage by the way by nick and frank and ash and everybody at the at the euros it was awesome i enjoyed it i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i always watch, like watching european racing we don't get to do see enough of it i look forward to buggy land i hope i'm there uh, rc gods help me get to uh buggy land i'd love to go back to madrid uh and i guess yeah look forward to that georgia peach state classic here we come uh looking forward to that that should be a great race. We're going to have uh, the clinic, all that type of stuff. I'll be doing commentary. Danny will be there and look forward to that. I like it up in Tiger. And of course, the future races, Florida RC Championships, Masters, AMS. Ooh, AMS is going to be off the hook. I cannot wait to go to AMS. That's coming up the first weekend of November. So go over to AMS, go over to RC, sign up, get signed up for AMS. It is a cap race. Once that is capped, you will not be able to get in. Um, I'm really going to push some of the Europeans to come over and race. Uh, I know, I think Robert is coming and I'm hoping that Barufalo comes. I'm going to talk to Nicola again, see if we can push to get him over there. And uh, yeah, just good stuff. I'm looking forward to that. AMS, Florida Cup of Champs, FRCC, Fall Brawl, all that good stuff. And 2024 is looking very positive race-wise uh, as well. Really looking forward to the H2GP coming up as well. That's going to be very interesting. With that said, uh, we're going to call it a day here at the No Name RC Podcast. This is episode 253. I'd like to say thank you to all the NNRC squad around the world that help us and support us. We can't do this without you guys. Thank you for the continued support. If you're listening to us on an audio platform, please leave a review. Uh, if you haven't gone over and uh, subbed and hit that notification button, like or dislike button, and left a comment on our YouTube channel, please do that. Uh, there's other content that other than podcasts that I've done, you know, walkabouts from different races that I've done. We have the Wicked Weekend walkabout coming out this week. Uh, me and Danny have another little short video coming out from this past weekend, like behind the scenes type of stuff uh, as well. So go check it out. Hit that like button. Help us get to 5,000 subs by the end of the year um, as well. We greatly will appreciate that. And hit that share button. Thank you to all of the patrons and YouTube members of the NNRC. If you wish to become one of those guys, please do. It helps us out. Uh, links for that in the written description of this podcast. Thank you to our awesome sponsors. They are Invisible Speed, High Tech RC, Sampadal USA, Sidewinder Fuel, Hot Race Tires, Mayako, Beach RC, Techno RC, Clinic RC, Lugs RC, Ignite Design RC, Stack RC, Donathan RC. Don't forget, you can save 10% on that. Racecraft USA, Florida, Florida RC Championships. I just want to say Florida Carpet Championships. WRCE and uh, shout out to my boy SJ Racing and of course uh, RC Body Armor Brent Jackson as well uh, House of RC RCGP and shout out to our drivers David Ronafalk Jared Tebow Robert Badier 
Alex Hagberg and our newly appointed knight in shining armor in 10 scale, Sir Spleenless, the one, the Sir Spleenless, uh, Maddie G. Good luck to him at the Royals coming up. With that said, Nitro is the glory. E buggy pays the bills. If you ain't grinding, you're sliding. Lefty is. Oh, I see Max. Ghost Max. He's to see him right there. Casper. Vampire Max. He'll be back next week. I miss him already. I miss Maxie. Uh, he will be back. And I'm sure he has a lot to talk about. With that said, if you ain't grinding, you're sliding. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Have a good weekend of racing. Be a great RC ambassador. A lefty is out as soon as I find my outro song. Bam, 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 bam. There we go. Bye-bye.